Hello everyone and welcome to the 28th edition already of the High Roller Super Millions, which of course is being played over at GG Poker. It is time for another final table and I'm going to be one of your commentators, Kevin Decoy, also known as Rotterdam in the world of StarCraft 2. And as each and every single of these 28 weeks, I am joined by the fabulous Nana Noko. Nana, how are we doing on this early morning for you and how was your week? Everything is great. Uh, we got the holidays right around the corner. Got to do a little shopping. Uh, but you know what's back? The Daniel Negreanu challenge was back the other day. Uh, and he, Daniel wants some monies. He put some pressure on uh, Doug Polk, mix some bet sizes up, some big bets, and uh, he won over $100,000. So, you know, maybe he's back. We'll talk more about that challenge in 10 minutes because you guys know we used to start at 7 p.m. Central European summer time or well, Central European time. It's definitely not summer right now, but we're starting 10 minutes earlier just to go over the final table betting a little bit. We've had it for the previous three weeks, three times in a row. The man who came in as chip leader ended up winning the entire tournament. And especially last week, I saw the clip went semi-viral in the poker world of the last few hands with the 7-5 offsuit. But enough of that, let's take a look at the lineup that we have for you guys today. These are the nine players that have made it to the final table of our 28th edition. And obviously on the right side, you guys can see the odds for them to potentially win it all. Nananoko, if you look at this list and you were a betting man, and you had a free, let's say, $100. You can either put it on one player specific or you could divide it a little bit. What are the best bets in your eyes? Um, I think the safest bet uh, would be Nick Petrangelo in second place. Uh, you can see most of the bettors do agree. There's $17,000. He's like the guy that most of the money is on today. Um, he's actually played, I think, a lot of the Super Millions. He hasn't cashed and made a final table yet. Uh, which is a bit surprising, but uh, this guy ships tournaments really regularly. He plays really big. Uh, he even played the million dollar tournament for Triton that one tournament. And, you know, he played 100Ks, 25Ks and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I would say he's a safe bet, um, you know, 4.4. He's not the chip leader because we did have the chip leader win, uh, what, three times in a row now. Um, we don't know who this chip leader is, Xing Yun is, but he's got three, you know, he's got the odds in, in, say that he's he's the favorite still. He's got all the chips, uh, but uh, that's the one that really stands out for the safe bet. But um, I said this last time, but Anatoly Filatov, uh, you know, he had comes in as a shorter stack and you get quite good odds, 13.3 uh, if he does happen to ship it. He's got the style that's super aggressive and can definitely spin it up in my opinion. Last time I think he went out first, but he got super cooler to uh, like Queens versus Aces or, or something uh, very similar to that. Uh, but Anatoly, uh, is definitely one that uh, stands out uh, for me. 
Well, I want numbers, Nano. You've got seven minutes left. You've got a three hundred dollars. What do you do? Eighty on Petrangelo, twenty on Filitolev, something like that. You know, I, I put a little bit of money on Daniel Divorce as well. Yeah, I would say I probably put fifty bucks on you know Petrangelo, and then like split the other two twenty-five, twenty-five split between uh, Divorce and Filitolev. But if you look at Divorce, they think that Divorce is skill level um outshines anatoly uh because if you look at the chip stacks right after the name there's a four hundred thousand chip stack difference right but anatoly is the one that you get better you know you get the better price if he does happen to win is dan divorce the more experienced player probably in, in high fields but i think anatoly might be a little bit underrated compared to him just because of how big of a name daniel divorce is i think anatoly I probably would put more money on Anatoly personally, so maybe I would do like a a 50, 40, 10 split at a hundred bucks uh, to put it down, just because the odds, it just seems like, I'm not sure if it's quite fair for him in that spot, but you know, the bigger names are going to attract the, the worst odds for you in terms of uh, choosing yep. who, who to win. Yeah, and that doesn't even necessarily always have to do with the likelihood of them winning, right? But it's just that a lot of fans will see Daniel Devoris and they are more willing to put some money on a big name like Daniel Devoris than on someone who is perhaps a little less known to the big audience out there like Filatov. I can get behind that, Nanonoko. I like that, the 50-40-10 split. Of course, guys, in six minutes, our official pre-show will start, and then we'll go over all nine players, and we'll take a look at some of the hands that they had, as we always do. And in 36 minutes, the actual poker will start, which is obviously what we look uh, most look forward to. But yeah, you guys still have five minutes to get a couple bets in there. You want to hear my bets for the week, Nanonoko? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right. Well, I had a rather rough week at the table, so I was like, you know what? I haven't done very well the final table betting, so we're not going to get too carried away. But I think that my biggest bet is actually on uh, Alexei Barkov. It's not that I know a whole lot about him, but you know me, I'm very fond of the Eastern European players. I feel like they can go in a heat here. Last week, we're so close. I mean, our Russian player really should have had it. I can't believe that. That ship late slipped away in like three hands. <laughs> you already congratulated me three times on my win. And I was like, uh oh, when Nano says I've got it, I already know I don't got it. Uh, but yeah, I put some money on Barkov. I think he's my biggest winner. Then I definitely put some money on Filatov just because we were impressed with his play last time. And he's actually got the chips to work with as well. Then Julian Stewart, I was like, it's not quite Ukraine, Russia, but I was like, you know what, 7.4. We'll throw in a little bet on Julian as well, just to round things up. And then I want to pay some attention to the man who's all the way at the bottom. Obviously, big odds always stand out, 27 to 1. Vlad Martinenko. And this guy has been on an absolute heater. Between Sunday night, when these guys played in this tournament and they play down to the final table, and now he has won three WSOPC side events for $140,000 in total. So if anybody is going to run it up from the bottom spot, and you know, 700K is not, he's not coming in with like three big blinds, you know, he's actually has a tiny bit of wiggle room. So I was like, I mean, I can't pass up on that opportunity. So I think I threw 20 bucks on Martinenko as well. I was like, run it up to the moon, mate. Like you've been crushing, keep crushing. <laughs> You almost want him to have less big blinds so your odds are better, you know what I mean? Like, what's the difference between having 10 big blinds or 8 big blinds, you know? Like, it's almost the same exact thing at that point. But, you know, you don't get to choose. But, yeah, 27 to 1. Uh, Vlad has been doing uh, real good, as, you, as you've been saying. Um, Julian Stewart, actually, I believe, if I recall correctly, he's actually a, uh, someone who comes from America, but I guess he's probably based in Europe now. He's actually a very, very good player. He plays all the uh big high roller tournaments even the side events so you know like mm -hmm. those 5k 25ks and stuff so he's not a name that a lot of the guys watching will know but he's very very strong i think it's a very good bet from you uh you know and but alexei i don't know anything about him but it does seem like other people do because you know he's the guy who's got the most the third most money on the line right now is it because he's in the third place possibly but uh, yeah, I don't know anything about it. But we've seen time and time again, these guys that make it to the final table are actually all very good, despite us not knowing who they are. Yep. And it does seem that people that have been watching the show, they're like, you know what? Roddy was wrong last week. 
but he's definitely right in week four because there's no way that the chip leader wins it four times in a row and that's actually surprising this is the first time that we see the chip leader not have uh not even like by, by the close amount the most amount of bets on him only 32 people believe that xing yung is actually going to take it down all today even though he's got by far and away the most chips right he's got a 1.3 million chip advantage over uh, petrangelo uh, people are not believing in the four out of four i mean this has been so insane ever since we introduced final table betting before that our storyline was that only one person in like 25 weeks or something among those lines was able to come in to the final table as ship leader and win it all and then the guys over gg poker are like new future final table betting and we're like oh cool and i was like well the chip leader never wins and i'm betting on everyone other than the chip leader and they win it three out of three weeks it's like what are the odds nenonoko what are the odds i mean exactly well those are the odds right now um <laughs> so i guess the final table be betting will be closing real soon i do have a quick yep. question if you put down like a uh, hundred bucks and it says 3.83 to win do you get 383 dollars back is that how it works or the number that that you see no, there? i think uh well yes yeah yeah i think that's how it works obviously yeah that would make sense if you yeah, put 10 so bucks on uh simon you would get 200 for instance so yes got it okay sounds good uh no i think um i guess the one thing is the chip leader is the one guy that doesn't have a, a real name tag on him so maybe that's why some of the betters are like uh, I, I feel like I got to go for the, the first big, big stack with the big best name, and it's Petrangelo. Maybe that's why all the betters and and the total bets are there. You know, it's funny because when you ask me the question like that, I'm like, I'm I'm pretty sure, even though I've placed without exaggeration probably a hundred thousand <laughs> bets in my life, and I'm like, no, 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 go, why are you putting me in this spot? Like, but yeah, that's obviously how it is. So a hundred dollars on Xing Yang would give you a two hundred and eighty-three dollar profit for sure. So got you it, get okay. three eighty-three back. Um, yeah, sounds good. I believe the final table betting is just closed just now, Roddy. That is correct. It is 7 p.m. And that means that you guys are no longer able to bet. But of course, if you're like, damn it, I missed it. Or you see a little bit about it later in the show. Pretty much an hour, two hours after the tournament is actually kind of done on Sunday evening when we are down to the final nine. The odds are already out there. What I do is often just on the Monday afternoon, I open the GG client. I just find the tournament in running tournaments. And then you just click on the table and it will have a button immediately. And it has a button in the lobby now as well, which is a beautiful green final table betting. But yes, this week it's done. Of course, we'll be talking about it throughout the show. We'll be mentioning those odds. But for now, it's time to officially kickstart our pre-show. In 30 minutes, the cards will go up in the air. You already kind of mentioned it yesterday. Daniel and Doc continued their high stakes feud. I did not watch everything because I had a very long day myself yesterday, but I saw a couple of hands. And there was this one hand where Daniel actually made, I think, a pretty big bluff on the river. Doc called him with like seven, three of clubs. He had to flush. And I was wondering because there was a pair at board and it took him a long time to call. I don't think he's ever folding in a million years, right? He's not folding a flush heads up. But I was like, I wonder if you thought about raising or not. I don't know if you know the hand that I'm talking about. I, I don't know the hand. I didn't catch too much of, of the action today. Uh, so it's, unless you can you can run it real quick to me, uh, uh, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. It must be yeah, it, it was, it was a, complicated. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't have to go into that because then I really have to open it. But TLDRs was a paired board with three clubs on the board and Doc uh, had two clubs and Daniel made a very big bet on the river. But there was some behind. He could have technically gone all in, but. You know, a seven high flush or ten high, whatever it was. And I was like raising on the paired board. Maybe Doc felt that he could only get raised by worse. But yeah, it was good to see Daniel fight back. Because also the last session before they took a break also went in Daniel's favor. So it's two in a row. But finally, it's not like, congrats, Daniel, you won $12,000 today. You know, not, no, these were two proper wins, couple buy-ins. And I think that's what he really needs to uh, make a strong rally back in. I would almost say even the second part of this heads up challenge. Because we're always almost halfway through i think at this point if uh i think daniel feels quite confident that he will continue because they're very mm -hmm. close to the halfway mark um, unless in the next session he just goes on a 10 buy and down swing <laughs> in one it's possible uh but uh i do think it will like most almost certainly continue at this point especially if he just had a couple winning sessions he's not like yeah i'm out i'm done 
Now, before I forget, because I do forget this one often, of course, guys, we have a couple free rolls tonight. I will give you guys the heads up of when they all when they almost start, and I have the passwords as well, but I can't talk about that yet. Uh, make sure to check out GG Poker on Twitter. They still run the Guess the Winning Hand Twitter contest. I believe the jackpot tonight is $1,000, and all you really have to do to participate in that is predict the winning hand, the final hand, uh, I think I went for King Jack offsuit today. You know, I don't know. I was listening. Oh. <laughs> I, I had Tony G in my mind. I was like, you know what? Never. I was like, A, I was like, no, it's too predictable. I was like, never overplay King Jack. You're right, Tony. Shouldn't do it, but maybe it's good enough in a heads up scenario. So that's what I went for. But yeah, guys, make sure to check out GG Poker on Twitter. And I think that kind of does it, Nanonoko. Let's take a look in depth of our nine players that have made it to the final table. I'm going to kick things off, of course, with our chip leader. Let's see what Xing Yun has been up to over a GG Poker. Apparently, he's got $133,000 in winning. I started there because I saw his avatar and I was like, oh, he's a fan of Israel Adesanya. Are you familiar with MMA? No, no, no I do not know, but uh, cool. Cool story. I guess he's a fighter, right? Yes, he is the current reigning champ of uh, middleweight, I believe. Like He wants to go up to light heavyweight. So yes, uh, Adesanya, an absolutely amazing fighter and a real boss. But yeah, this is actually kind of shocking to see that Xing Yong has only, quote unquote, only won $133,000 so far in his GG Poker career, which means he can absolutely smash that tonight if he has a proper run and finishes in the top three. Uh, he has played in 10 of these. That is definitely a noteworthy stat, but this is only his second cash so far. But he is coming in chip leader, so he's going to make up all those, you know, other entries that did not go so well here in this event. Um, you know, based on the results so far, is he the most experienced player here? Probably not. Um, he might be one of the least experienced, but sometimes it's, it's just the chips that does the talking. So we'll see. We have know nothing about him, but when you come in as a chip leader, uh, you're not, you're never the first one to bust. So, you know, he could easily <laughs> outla outlast a lot of guys and make a lot of money today. When you say that, I started getting worried for him, Nanonoka. I was like, oh <laughs> my goodness, this guy's about to run into the seven biggest coolers of his life. But this makes it really fun for me, because if this guy comes in as with someone like eight or ten big blinds, you're like, well, he's going to try to ladder up and he's going to be very quiet unless he gets an absolute monster. But I'm really curious to see what our wild card will be up to as chip leader coming into tonight. We do have one of his hands that helped him get to his very first final table of the High Roller Super Millions. I looked at this hand and I'm like, well, I don't really have much to say about it other than that he, uh, well, that he likes flopping top pair and raising it, I guess. But what do you make of it, Nanonoka? Yeah, um, I would say the flop raise is not standard, especially with this kicker uh, on this board texture. So, you know, some people like to, to raise and kind of balance their check raising because they, they check raise a lot of loss. Some people like to raise kind of see where they're at and I get a little confused because to be fair, if a king or ace rolls off, he really probably won't know where he's at, especially if his opponent starts betting again. Um, but Watson's stack in this hand is playing about 24 big blinds to start the hand. Um, yeah, I think check raising does get you in a bit more dicey situation if they continue, but if they don't continue, you know, it's like the easiest way to play, play the hand. Um, I, I, you know, it's just people have different styles, so it's really hard to say too much more than that. Yeah. I think it is a kind of play that I would like to make, but obviously nobody that's listening to the show should ever go into plays that I would like to make because I am not even close to making a final table. But yeah, it is one of these hands where it's like, well, there's a lot of bad turn cards. I think even with like a jack or a 10, it could get a little bit more scary, right? Because then all of a sudden there are straight draw possibilities. So I don't hate the play, but that's just me. I'm a total fish, guys. Let's get ready to talk about our second player that has made it to the final table tonight the 28th edition one of the absolute biggest names we got on this final table nick petrangelo the numbers speak for themselves has not been super fortunate yet in the high roller super millions as he has played 18 times he did cash five times but not a single final table but he is ready to change that tonight nano as he comes in a second tell the people at home why we should be pumped to watch petrangelo play some poker tonight well, Nick Petrangelo is a, is a friend of Doug Polk because I'm pretty sure he's one of part of their upswing team uh, for the MTT. Uh, he's He plays the biggest tournaments. You can look at his career highlights. He's played 100K. He's played $300,000 tournaments. So he actually even played the Triton Million when that was going on. Uh, he's He's got this funny video out there. I don't know if you've ever seen it. He's like 
drunk we're having a bunch of beers and he's just like shirtless and it's like some twitter little video i don't you, you can look it up i'm sure someone knows about it uh he's he's just a big all-around crusher uh he understands the different bet sizings he, he's i think he's gonna do good today personally well let's take a look at one of the hands that mr petrangelo had on his journey to his first final table i did not see that video i do really want to see it at this point nano but unfortunately we got to get through our pre-show but that's the first thing i do when we are done with tonight we're taking a look at the hand where he had queen deuce of diamonds and he is raising on the flop is this the kind of stuff that we can expect from him tonight it's, it's, yeah, of course. I mean, look at the stack size he had when this, he did this play. This is, he only had about 20, 20, 22 big blinds to start this hand. And people don't really raise bluff, you know, with the queen deuce on this 10, 9, 3. Especially, this looks like it's the final table bubble or plus one from there, uh, given the, the stack sizes and the positions and how many people are there. Uh, this is aggressive. This is a cool play, but you know. It, it works because a lot of times the chip leaders they'll throw out a random bet into your short stack trying to just take it down knowing that you'll never fight back but not for nick petrangelo he understands uh the situation he knows he can put the pressure and you know what when you see the back door draw you cannot unsee it so he's like all right let me make a little move here and uh <laughs> you got it done definitely did get it done let's take a look at our next player and the man who comes in uh as third place when it comes to the amount of chips alexei barkov you guys can see he has done pretty damn well over gg he's formerly known as joker face and i do remember that name which means that this is the second final table that mr barkov has made in the high roller super millions this guy strikes me as someone who's very very active over on our platform <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I, that Joker phase does sound very familiar. It was a special tournament that he did uh, reach the final table at. Um, he, I mean, he's clearly a good player. You know, he's gotten to the final table in one of those big fields. He's only actually played the Super Million six times, but two final tables and four caches is really good for six times playing this event. Um, looks like he usually comes out just for the big ones, the special events, uh, like, you know, the WSOPC, High Roller Week, etc. Yeah, he, he's a guy you put the money on, so you, you better be Rudy for him today, Rowdy. Yes, well, I will, and I will show you guys why it's real soon. But I also want to mention that the first free roll will start in, I believe, 10 minutes. Head over to GG Poker. Take a look at the free roll section and there will be a free roll the password for the free roll that starts in 10 minutes is ggtv so ggtv that simple four characters and uh, good luck if you are participating in our first free roll we've got two more but more about that later let's take a look at the hand that uh, barkov had or one of the many hands that he had on his journey to his final table but this one then uh, i saw this hand and i was like yes i love it he is really being put to the test by fate or holds but uh, our strong Russian man did not go anywhere. Talk us through, but I was a big fan. I like it a lot. I mean, this is a big hero call uh, to make. A lot of guys don't make this call, but sometimes you just got to stick it to Fedor Holtz, right? This guy is just pure bluffing the King Jack suited, bet, bet, jam. You know, he's got he's got no draw besides the King High, you know? And uh, yeah, I, it's just pretty much, I know my opponent. I know he's aggressive. And he was getting way out of line with King Jack here. Not even a flush draw, you know, like, I, this is just beautiful. Uh, you know, he defended from the big blind, Fedor's under the gun. But sometimes you know your opponents from under the gun, especially with, a, with the knowledge of Fedor holds. So they just try to represent all the big hands. They know they can. And, um, you know, I guess he figured that Alexei wouldn't have too many queens in his range besides like a queen X suited that check called the flop. Uh, sometimes you got to defend with the bottom of your range because otherwise they're just going to run you over if they're just going to bet, bet, jam, anything. I got to say, a very, uh, I don't know, heroic call. Especially, I think, on the turn when you see the queen of clubs roll off. I think that's where it becomes really hard. You don't want to fall to just one potential card that's connected to your opponent. But on the other end, you're like, oh, it gets scary. And what if he did have a little overfair? But very well done by Alexei. He didn't go anywhere. And Fedor obviously lost pretty much all of his chips there. If you guys wonder why don't we have Fader holds at the final table, well, this hand is pretty much the reason. Let's take a look at our next man. He already kind of briefly touched on him in our uh, final table betting segment. Julian Stewart. Uh, he has played in 26 high rollers super millions. That is insane. 
This man is incredibly dedicated. 26 out of 28 weeks he has been part of this event. He has made it to one final table before. Back then, didn't go too well. Finished in eighth place. That was just a couple of weeks ago. But he is back, and this time he comes in with way more chips. Yeah, um, yeah. when he got eighth place, he did not have many chips at all. I think he would possibly even was in ninth. But uh, he has the talent, uh, as I touched up earlier today. Um, he's got 2 million in GG poker winnings. And the reason is this is because he plays all the high roller side events as well. You know, the 5K, 10K blades, uh, 25Ks. He plays everything. Um, pretty sure he's an American player that looks like he's based in Poland now. Uh, but he's he's played 26 super millions, almost all of them. Uh, hasn't had, you know, the best results there. But, you know, he's actually got some caches if you look at the bottom right. So he's not doing too bad there. But, you know, today is maybe that day where he gets it done. You put some money down on him today, I believe. And I think personally, he, it's a very good uh, pick, especially with the odds given. Well, I wish him all the best, but I'd rather see Barkov win it tonight because that, that is a little better for me. But <laughs> uh, let's see what Julian Stewart is made of. Obviously, it's good to have him back and we wish him all the best. Take a look at one of the hands that he had that absolutely helped him get to this final table because he was pretty damn close to being bamboozled earlier in this tournament. He was battling it out with another very familiar face to this show. Nicholas Ostad, Lina 900. On the other hand, Ace King, are you just kind of committed on the flop? You can't really go anywhere. Do you have too much committed? Or what do you make of this hand? Yeah, a little bit of that, but also very easy to best hand. Um, but he does three bet the Ace King. Uh, Lena 900 calls with two tens and bets the flop and gets jammed on. I think with the 15 big blinds you got remaining, you kind of just got to side call it off of the Ace King here. You know, you still have a chance against two tens. It's not like you're drawing dead. Uh, but you can have the best hand. If you fold ace king and your opponent say has like a jack ten of clubs, a king queen of clubs, it's a disaster. Um, I think you know with these shallow stacks, you you kind of just go, you kind of just hope close your eyes and go for it. And I guess, uh, you know, the one of the good things, even though you don't have a backdoor club draw in your hand, um, I don't think it, it's probably better to not have it. I think potentially, I don't know. It's because the club helps you if you have extra equity, but then again. You also block the flush draws you want to kind of pick off, so kind of a bit of a, a trade-off here and there. Um, but you know, he made he made the the wrong call. But uh, you, like I said, just because you make the wrong call doesn't mean you don't got a chance to spike it. And he does a uh, river deck king against Lena nine hundred. <laughs> Well, that is the reason why we still have Julian with us and we wish him all the best tonight. Let's take a look at our next player as we have 15 minutes left until the final table actually starts for all of us. This man is back. His second final table is fifth cash so far in the High Roller Suite Minutes out of 11 appearances. That is very good. Anatoly Filatov, we saw him just the other week and he left a really good impression on us, even though he couldn't really do much. Didn't he have the Queens, right? That's what happened. What's that? That was yeah, yeah, that's right. The very first hand oh. of the army, he had queens into aces or queens into kings, one of the spots, and he was one of the bottom stacks. Uh, but he gave everyone that little page up, especially that guy that was just hanging on throughout that final table, uh, Vico or Vera or something like that. But um, <laughs> yeah, he he's here today. Um, I think uh, he's very aggressive. Like I mean, like when I say aggressive, I'm not saying oh he just three bets him. This guy will just put some moves on you post-flop and pre-flop. Uh, I really would like to see him uh, run up a stack and do really well because uh, I think he's gonna, he could potentially make our show extra fun today. Yeah, I was like, I remember the name very well and I thought he made a good impression. I was like, oh no, he's the guy who ran Queens. He had to wait. That was the first hand, literally the first hand of our show back then. Finished up on Sunday evening, feeling good, made a final table has a day and a half to just recoup himself, get ready. First and you're like, all right, Queens, let's get it in there. And you are done. That was pretty brutal. But these stats are so impressive, man. 11 appearances, five caches, second final table. And tonight comes in with slightly more chips than he had last time. So can't wait to see what Mr. Filatov has in store for us. Let's take a look at one of the hands that he had. The hand kind of speaks for itself, but the run out is very exciting. Then Anoko, we're getting a pre-flop all in with aces. And on the turn, all of a sudden, you're like, well, this isn't looking all that good anymore. But he still got there in the end. 
Uh, I think this is one of these hands where we can't really say too much about it. You know, he gets it all in, gets called by Darren Elias. Uh, this is yeah. a Hollywood Hollywood movie hand, you know, like you get in two aces, the queen jack, you start punching your your, your screen right when the guy turns it straight because you're almost drawing dead. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just bank that ace on the river card and you're celebrating it, you know. And this is pretty far into the tournament too, man. Like, uh, but this is... Uh, this is the one where you got a very big swing of emotions and you're really upset for like a little bit for that split second but then you sweat it out with the gg client the squeezing and then you're like oh my god i actually hit that ace <laughs> yeah i mean the, the only thing that would have helped him is the ace of hearts or one of the two last remaining nines right because nothing else would really get there and then uh, shing yun also showing us hey darren elias you got ultra lucky because i had the ace of spades and darren elias like come oh, on Oh, well, it's great to have Filitov with us, and I'm very excited to watch him play some poker tonight. Let's take a look at our next player, the man who comes in as a sixth, I believe. It is Simon Higgins, someone who's also played a lot over at our GG Poker client and seems to be a very successful live player too. Hasn't done super hot in the High Roller Super Million so far. Played 13 times, only his second cash, but uh, you only need to win one of them. Uh, for us to talk about you as one of the champs what can you tell us about simon higgins nano i don't actually know too much about simon higgins i feel like i've seen the name but i, I don't mean don't know anything uh but he plays 25 ks very regularly as you can see uh he's got a lot of he's got the bankroll to play he's won two wsopc side events this week so he's playing all the high roller side events at the same time as he's playing you know some of these uh smaller wsopc events um like you said hasn't made a splash in the super millions yet but just takes one time and uh he's coming in sixth place 18 big plans so he's got the stack to work with let's take a look at one of the hands that simon higgins had that helped him get to his very first final table i think a hand that kind of speaks for itself i don't think anything really stands out well look uh, look carefully is... look carefully roddy he doesn't have the queen of clubs he's got the oh. ace club and the queen okay. of spades he's got the bluff here <laughs> all right then i misread the hand indeed you are completely correct i was like ah oh, ace queen of clubs you know i made the flush let out on the river did not have it just had the ace of clubs okay that makes the hand a lot more fun i was like why did they go for this one but now i get it Nana. well how much do you love it are these the kind of plays that get you uh, going yeah, these are the fun ones, and we'll just talk it through real quick. So he raises the ace queen, gets three bet by uh, Ruin F, and calls the three bet opposition. He check calls with his inside straight draw, backdoor, you know, fluff draw, blah blah blah. You know, once Ru Ruin F checks the turn, he looks quite weak. Um, so I, it's a mandatory bet from Simon Higgins here. Uh, and plus, the thing is, it's hard for Simon Higgins to be bluffing unless he's got you know. Queen Jack, Ace Jack, Ace Queen. You know, sometimes those Ace Jacks and Ace Queen decides to fold the flop. So I think it's very credible because he can represent the trip tens, he can represent the flush. And if Ruin F, you know, he probably doesn't have a big hand once he checks the turn. I mean, I guess he could have like King Queen and Ace King sometimes, but uh, you block those hands a little bit. I think it's, an, it's a nice play. He can easily get a Queens or Jacks to fold here for a weak King. Uh, yeah, this, I like to see the big bluffs. I always root for those guys that do well today. <laughs> you know, this is uh, since the very first day that I started playing over GG Poker, I started using the four color deck. But there's many different kinds of decks, right? You can have where they still look like this, but then it's just like a four color deck. But you also have the full four, four color deck where it's like the entire card is red, blue, black or green and that's the one that i love it's the one that i always use and i never misread a hand ever you know even if you play plo or whatever but yeah like these traditional graphics they get me every now and then i'm not used to cards looking like this anymore but well done by simon higgins let's take a look at our next player someone that a lot of you guys are probably very excited for because we had a lot of bets coming in on this man when it comes to our final table betting but daniel devoris is back at the final table for the third time but man, this man plays a lot. He loves this tournament. He may very well be our biggest fan, Nanonoko. He has played 27 weeks out of the 28 possible weeks. I truly wonder what happened the one week where Daniel couldn't play. I just hope he's all right. You know, I'm always getting a little concerned what happened on that Sunday. But it's really cool to have Daniel back. And he also won the, one of the bracelets, the WSOP 
uh, Millionaire Maker. That was a big, big tournament. Um, I do recall though, when he made our final table, he came in as chip leader um, or top two and he busted out in seventh place. He got super cooler when he, he defended a, like a weak ace and hit two pair and then the other guy had trips for a set and then, you know, it is what it is, but look at the scores. Four million dollars in one tournament. It's very hard to do that, uh, but you do have to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy that. Um, he comes to the Triton events, and you know, uh, he's done very, very well there, as you can see. Uh, he won one point five million in that Millionaire Maker for fifteen hundred dollar buy-in. He, he won like what a thousand buy-ins or something crazy. Uh, <laughs> he, he's he's a big he's a big name. He's he started out as a cash game player. He actually started out a cash game player and actually played uh, various stack sizes. So he was playing like 20 big blinds, 30 big blinds, 40 big blinds, and then, you know, up to 100 big blinds at some point. So he understands all the different stack sizes in cash game, transition over the tournaments, been crushing since. Uh, he's got the all around package. Well, that's why a lot of people put some money on him tonight. Can't blame him. If I had a hotter week, maybe I would have gone for it. But I was like, tonight I need some Eastern European magic to carry me through a big payday. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Daniel Devores had on his journey to his third final table. Uh, ace nine versus eight deuce. We have an ace on the river. What do you make of this hand, Nana? We I mean, can see here, he, I would say the flop is standard. You're gonna call it the ace nine high, but the turn definitely not. His opponent bets into him again, who was being very out of line at the eight deuce. Uh, <laughs> he makes another He makes another good call of the ace nine and uh, you know, goes check, check on the river. And this is a uh, very scary because you got to know how deep they are into the tournament. This is the final two tables with a couple of players already busted out and he's still making big calls. And that's the thing. People who are not scared and they just kind of play the way they think they should be, plus EV based on the hands, etc. Those are the guys that have the best chance of winning the tournament because they're not trying to like ladder up here and there. They understand how laddering works, but they're still going to make the right moves. Well, that means we have two players left to cover before we take a look at our actual final table and where everybody's going to sit. Next up, second shortest stack coming into our 28th final table. We've got Marius Gierse. Gierse? I hope I... Uh, I don't know. These German, Austrian names, I'm never exactly sure. Production would be us. There we go. Marius Gierse, formerly known as uh, Rudy Ratlos. This is his second final table. Apparently, he final table what feels like a pretty long time ago, September 13th. That must have been one of our bigger additions to Nano because $467,000 for second place. That means that we had a massive field that day. Yeah, how much do you remember of uh, Rudy Ratlos or Marius Giersen? Yeah, that addition was huge because to win 467,000 for second is, is a lot. I believe I was saying the scout was very good in that tournament. Uh, and he, he was in, I th in prime position to do really well. I can't remember which one who won end up winning that one. But regardless, uh, when someone's got this kind of skill set and they come into the final table at the bottom, and you're, you know, a little bit of a wishful person. This is the one type of guy you want to bet on because they, they run up the stack. They can make things happen. Um, you know, he plays 10K side events, 5K side events regularly. They got the experience. He's a bit of an unknown name in terms of, uh, you know, like the, the people watching probably today. But uh, don't be surprised if he does well. Oh, 22 and a half to one. So for the guys out there who did put some money on him, they're going to be cheering. But I always feel that a guy like this could be a little bit reckless too, because I don't think he's playing for like an eight or a seventh place. Like he probably just wants to run up his stack. But obviously that can be a dangerous game too. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Marius had on his journey to his second final table here. King, queen suited on this board. And uh, we are betting big on the turn. I mean, we are open-ended, Nano, but you love to play. I like it a lot. He does do the min bet on the flop, uh, but you just it's a mandatory uh, two barrel here because when you bet one big blind on the flop, your opponent's gonna check call with like all the ace highs. He's gonna call with you know little pocket pairs, and for those hands to call again on turn is quite tough if they don't have an extra spade in their hand. Uh, I think he played it pretty good. And you know the short stacks, you got to be a bit aggressive. Um, sure, your opponents can maybe. Kind of just ship it all in on you, but uh, you need to think about the fold equity. All right, and that means we have one more man to cover. The man who's been on an absolute heater. 
He has won $140,000 in three WSOPC side events since this event took place on the Sunday night. Of course, everyone plays on Sunday till we are down to nine and then the final table is played on Tuesday. Our final player tonight is Vlad Martinenko, hailing from the beautiful Ukraine. Have you ever been to Ukraine, Nana? I've been to the Ukraine airport. <laughs> Does that, that count? count? No, 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 no. Whenever people ask me, like, Roddy, have you been to this country? And I had a layover. I'm like, no, I have not. Because that simply doesn't count. That's an international territory, okay? Uh, well, yeah, we can see that Vlad Martinenko has done very well over GG Poker. Has won 2.1 million so far. Known as Vlad the Slayer, I guess that's supposed to be. He has played in seven high rollers, super millions so far. This is only his second cash, but he is on, I don't want to say the heater of his lifetime, but he's probably feeling pretty damn good at this point because he has been crushing. Yeah, uh, you know, he is coming in at the bottom here, but uh, you, like you said, he, he won three side events. You put some money on him. He's your kind of like your dark horse to kind of just ship it, right? Um, you know, sometimes when you're on a eater, you just nothing you can do to beat the guy, right? Like, unless he loses a post flop on the river card, but, uh, these, these guys, they, they're hard to get rid of. Um, uh, you know, he's got the, the, the most odds for you to win, right? You put down a hundred bucks, you'll get, uh, you know, God knows how 2,700 back. Yeah, 2.7. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, we'll see what he does. He's from Ukraine. Uh, he likes he likes some Strek, I guess. <laughs> for a man who's great at calculating big blinds, that was surprisingly difficult for you, Nanaka. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm actually not that great at it, but uh, I'm getting better. But you know, yeah, that's, the odd, these betting odds are a little bit uh, tricky for me. <laughs> I mean, you can also just take a look at the U.S. one. Like the U.S. one is, I think, is very complicated in general, but it works with if you exactly bet a hundred dollars, because then it's like plus twenty six hundred, so you obviously get twenty seven hundred in total. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Vlad Martinenko had on his journey to his final table. Uh, at this point, he was perhaps doing a little hotter than he currently is, because he won a monster pot as Michael Watson paid him off. Now we're almost starting, so you gotta keep it quick. Yeah, the nuts is pretty good. Pretty good. He got called by the two pair, uh, and I do. I just want to point out. I see Damien Salas on this table too. I think the final table bubbled, and he actually was the one to ship that WSOP GG main event. Uh, that will be happening later um, this month. But uh, here, here we go. Here we go, guys. Thirty minutes have gone by. Our pre-show is over, and it is time for what all of you guys are waiting for, and obviously us too. It seems like we are landing in the middle of the seat selection. Let's see if anybody makes the rookie mistake of timing out. If that happens, according to Nanonoko, you lose all your chances of actually winning this tournament. <laughs> all right, Nano, our little prediction game. I'll let you go first. Who do you think is going to win the 28th edition of the High Roller Super Millions? I mean, I really want to pick Nick Petrangelo, you know, but something is telling me today it's not going to be one of the big stacks, uh, you know, and I'm going to add a Tolly Filatov. I think... Uh, He's aggressive. He's creative. I want to see him do well. I was very disappointed with his Queen's Cooler uh, the last time he made our final table. But uh, that, that's my pick today. Well, I made the mistake of like betting on a couple guys with final table betting the previous weeks, but then selecting a different player so that I could spread my chances. And it's clearly not working. I'm not beating you in the prediction game and I'm not getting paid in final table betting. So today we are all in on Alexei Barkov. If you can withstand the pressure that Fedor Holtz puts on you and you make it to the final table in third, I believe you have what it takes to bring it all home. So all hope on the Russian, Nana. Yeah, well, I feel bad for him because your bets never pull through. Oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> hopefully he can still get far and win a lot of monies. Um, but uh, best of luck, of course, for your final table betting. I do say, though, Nick Petrangelo is the one that most people put the money on. He's the betting, fa uh, he's one of the favorites out there. He's got the skill set. Um, he's got almost 70 big blinds. This is, this is good. It's, and he's also got position on Anatoly Filatov. Oh, man, that sucks for me. <laughs> um, but we'll see what happens. And then uh, did you see that our chip leader just decided not to switch seats? So he didn't time out, but he is like, you know what? I'm fine where I'm at. Uh, what do you make of that? Xing Yong not deciding to change up anything. He's just like, you know, if this is where I've been dealt to sit at, this is where I'm going to sit. 
Um, I personally would have took position on Nick Petrangelo because you also get position on Filatov uh, or maybe, you know, move right be behind Daniel Devores. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to say, this is what I'm dealt. This is uh, what I'm going to play. And it uh, looks like uh, Devores is going to lose a little bit of chips here, huh? Yep, because Alexei Barkov is waking up with pocket queens in the very first hand. This may very well save a Vlad Martinenko. Now, King Queen is not necessarily a hand you want to get it all in with, but King Queen looks a little less appealing when it's an open and a three bet before you. So he's going to let go of the uh, big blind. Daniel DeVoris will most likely let go of his queen jack as well. Solid start yeah. for Alexei. He actually, uh, Vlad actually shows the king queen too from the big blind, and uh, you know whenever you see a guy show, you're like, oh, okay, what what is this guy doing? You know, because most guys don't show their hand from when, especially when it's an interesting decision. But I think it was actually quite straightforward. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. It's also probably first hand. I'm the shortest stack, you know. It's important to have some fun with poker. Sure, Nano, three hundred eighty-one thousand dollars at top. That's very serious money, and all of these guys want to win. But they had a day and a half to get ready for this final table. You know, and a little smile here and there doesn't really uh, hurt. And of course, all these players have the opportunity to watch the stream. So they could have seen anyway that he folded King Queen. Exactly. Well, Barkov's going to open up the ace nine of clubs. And I think Petrangelo is going to defend 4 3 suit. They got a lot of blinds to play for. He's got mm -hmm. the skill set. Um, I, I think I'd be pretty surprised, especially the price. You're getting, what, almost five to one. Uh, you don't need to win it too often, but uh, you will often just check fold because four three suited, you know, it doesn't flop too good, pretty much <laughs> ever. But occasionally you just hit a straight flush. And the back doors though, now no. you see that six of diamonds, and you're like, hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. a very tiny bet, like you know, seventy k into two eighty. But Nick Petrangelo is showing us that he brought some discipline with him tonight. I can already see the five of diamonds roll off on the turn. When I've got four, three there, I'm like, you know what? This flop is not all that bad, man. I'm about to turn an open and it's straight flush. It's going to be great. I'm sticking around. <laughs> I'll tell you a little little bit of a story. Like when we were doing this writing commentary and Jeff Gross was there with mm -hmm. me and we we're doing a commentary, and he just, Petrangelo was at the final table. He just kept butchering his name so bad. You have, and I was getting like mega tilted. He was going, he called, you know, he called, he called Petran. Petra Jello, he would say, and stuff like that. <laughs> the whole Twitch and YouTube chat were getting so tilted at him. It was like Petra Jello, like the LOL, LOL. And they were just like, oh, <laughs> Jeff Gross is back to butcher his name because sometimes it was rotate with Lex. And it was just really funny. And I would just give him, I would usually just kind of like, oh, yeah, this is how you say it. And I would just like give him shit for it uh, midway uh, in commentary. You know, look at Shin Yoon here, Ace Force suited for Daniel Divorce. He'll see a flop here. Oh, he's actually going to re-raise all in okay that's a cool move because a lot of guys they just defend they kind of like to play the little icm here but i like that daniel divorce knows that uh put the pressure on the chip leaders which we talk about a lot and some guys don't uh -oh. actually take those lines all right julian stewart could be in some trouble here but i want to point out that in that previous end then as much as i loved your story i thought it was very funny vlad martinenko folded ace 10 uh offsuit obviously not a mm. monster but against the chip leader who is probably going to open up a little bit looser I was a little bit surprised to see that. And then you also see Daniel DeVore is just jamming ace four into the chip leader. Now Simon Higgins with the aces is going to put in the three bet. I don't think Julian is going to go anywhere, right? I, can, I think you put some money on Julian Stewart and I think you're going to be a little sad because he's going to lose 1.5 million chips. Unless he flops Broadway. He does not. We do have clubs. Clubs? Oh, no. A club and Simon Higgins would be bamboozled. That would be brutal, but it's not a club. So he is safe. The Aces will get the double up. Simon Higgins goes up to 3.1 million. Not a bad way to start your final table on the Tuesday. Couple hands in. Ace King versus Aces all in and you hold. Let's go. That that just sucks for Julian Stewart because he like comes in not from the bottom and you know he was thinking good thoughts. Uh mm -hmm. That sucks for him, but here two jacks. He's gonna pretty much ship it in. Don't think he's gonna get action. I think uh, these guys are not gonna. Yeah, you can see the two sixes and two sevens. Like if you if you're a seasoned player, you're you're not gonna pay off that one. 
Why do you think he makes it 300k? Oh, oh okay. Let's actually hold that thought because then the board has got kings <laughs> and the chip leader has got pocket jacks. This could be a big one then. And Simon Higgins is the one actually opening things up. He's like, Ace five suited, folded to me, not all that bad. Well, Simon, you're gonna you're gonna lose those chips. Wave him goodbye because this hand is gonna get wild. Exactly. I don't think Xin Yun can fold. Uh, this just be pretty insane to fold two jacks here. Even though Simon Higgins is playing, I think Xin Yun should just make it like 600k or something. And there's no point in jamming because you make it 600k. There, he made it wow. 600k exactly. Uh, because yeah. you get the best of both worlds just in case Simon Higgins wakes up with the two aces. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an excellent prediction by you. Daniel DeVores is, of course, going to get it all in here. Uh, no way that he's ever letting go of the Kings. And Xing Yun will be forced to call. I don't remember if anybody had any jacks. So let's just see if there are jacks on the board. Whenever I see a flop like this, I'm always like, no, don't do it. No six. If I'm the one with Kings, I'm like, don't you dare put a six out there. It's close, but it's not. So that means that Daniel DeVores will get the double up. As Vlad Martinenko shows us that he did have a six. Well, 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 that's great news for all the guys who put some money on Daniel tonight. Well, I mean, great for Simon Higgins and Daniel DeForest, right? They just quick double ups and they're kind of like in the bottom middle of the stack. And, you know, now you're liking the odds that you're given because uh, they were in prime position to do really well here. And obviously the chip leader losing chips doesn't help for all those guys because... Three times in a row, chip leader winning is pretty hard to do. Fourth time seems very unlikely, and uh, some people know. But Alexa, Ace Ten Suit is a is a hand that he could potentially three bet and yeah. lose some chips. But uh, he might call, and he does. He might it's still call the flop though. That's a very disciplined call because I actually thought that Alexa could be in a bit of trouble here, especially if you then get four bet on. I mean, you may have to let it go, but you don't like it. You might think like, oh, this guy's just steaming because he just ran jacks into kings. You know, does he really have it? And Alexa really losing the bare minimum here with a pretty good hand, ace 10 suited. Uh, we knew that was the correct decision. Some other moments we may be like, oh, he probably could have done a little more with that, but well done. Yeah, I feel like we got some heavy action, like, really early um i want we'll see if daniel divorce is going to defend the queen jack suited out of position depend on the size i think is a high likelihood because he's playing what 50 something big blinds uh we we know he's he's uh willing to kind of just get it in and i think he's probably will especially because he already reached out on the ace for a suit on him earlier right from big blind versus that that mm -hmm. position um this is a hand that can play okay out of position, getting a good price. Uh, of course, your opponents are 3 bit ace king a lot, so the good thing about queen-jack suited is you're not dominated. Oh, he wow. looks like he is going to let go. I don't fault him, but uh, he does strike me as someone who would defend there. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, it's probably oh. safer not to. Oh, oh no. my god. Ace, no! Ace. Wait, no. wait, wait. Is Xing, Xing Yun, he's going to take out Alexei Barkov or what? No, don't say those things. We just saw Alexa being very... <laughs> Nana, why are you liking this so much? I cannot believe that this is what you love the most. You know, in a way, the fact that Nick Petrangelo just opened up with King-Queen suited, now we're going to get a big tree bet. Ace-King offsuit is a beast, but Nana Noko, how much trouble do you want to get into with Ace-King offsuit? This, this early this on. Go this is going in. He no. might just open rip it. It's... I'm sorry, but I think Alexei is going to lose all his chips here. No, he's a don't strong say player. It. Unless he's got some sick read on Xing Yun here, um, I just don't see it happening. Because chip leaders, three betting on chip leaders is just very common. He's putting in the four bet. I, there's a chance your guy is saved. And the way your guy is saved is if Xing Yun decides to slow play the two aces. Uh, but... Um, this also looks very strong for Alexei to, to be three betting oh, here. Man. Imagine if you're Xing Yun here. This is just, you're loving life at this point. And under the gun open, you three bet, you got four bet while you've got aces against the only other guy. Oh. He calls with the aces. Ace King doesn't flop anything. It could have been a lot worse, right? If there was like a king on that flop. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. The one thing that is going to save you is that Alexei did just get called by, by Xing Yun here. And I don't blame him because 
I guess Ching Yu could have just really stacked your guy, so don't feel too bad. I, I don't feel bad at all, but what I do, I'm slightly bothered by, is the amount of joy that it gave you. I've never seen you this happy in 28 <laughs> weeks, seeing my pick <laughs> and my bet going up in flames here with the setup. It's brutal. Man. Maybe well, it was just because how many chips he has, oh, well, he's just going to ship it all in with the two aces, and unfortunately, Alexei will be able to get away from the ace king. Even though the ace king is suspicious, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, you can see all the people laugh. They want yeah, to I called. love that uh, short stack. Martinenko was like, just one time. And then the second short stack, Mar uh, Marius is like, ha ha. <laughs> it's really cool to see that these guys are having okay. just a good time playing. Yeah. Um, I think Xing Yu probably should have just called that flop, to be honest. Uh but, uh, you know, sometimes you can just like, oh, man, I hope you got kings. Let's just get it in. Some yep. scary card doesn't roll off. But in that spot, I think calling was the right play on the flop. But uh, I guess he wasn't going to get too much more action anyways. Is there anyone in the world that does not uh, for bet ace king there? Yeah. Uh, what's, what's that one guy? I forgot. What's that? That one guy <laughs> I kept making fun of. What's his name? And the uh, the Spanish-Mexican player, right, you're talking about? Who folded no, Jack's no. preflop? Fitz Chris Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah that <laughs> Chris Fitzgerald is the guy who would definitely fold. Okay, oh, two man. nines. This hand could oh. be big. Well, look, what? Oh. Filatov just folded pocket tens. Did you see that? He snap folded it too against the stack. Wow, I'm very surprised. Um that that because that would have been a three-way all-in coming. Uh, but I guess Anatoly is just like, you know, I, I'm out. And I'm surprised Simon Higgins just calls because Julian Stewart, can he get away from two nines here? Five big no. blinds? I mean... Uh, this is so, this is bizarre. Yeah. Uh, this is the kind of flop where you know that... Oh, oh my, my god. god! That's god. why you don't get away <laughs> from two nines when you only have 250k chips behind. Wow, the turn from heaven... Mate, we are having a fun start to our show today. This is awesome. What a, an insane amount of action in our first 14 minutes. And Anatoly had two tens. He would have lost to both players and would have been out in ninth place again, which is hilarious. So he's still in it. Now I almost cursed my guy, right? Picking him, making him lose. But a full double up coming in for Julian Stewart. This has been a lot of stack changing really quickly Full for full ring table too. Yeah. Simon Higgins is going to be disgusted when he sees that it's pocket nines. That was the hand that he went up against. I love that Julian Stewart just uh, also called on the flo on the turn, you know, like he could really go anywhere. You call 50k, you have 200k behind. It's like, come on, man, what are we doing? Just get it in. But in the end, we do get it in. And that means that we still have all nine players with us tonight. And this is really one of the most fun starts I think we've had in 28 weeks. Yeah, usually it's very quiet, maybe a short stack bust out, but it's actually been no bust outs, but everyone just losing stacks so far. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Daniel Divorce got the same as that hand, but he flopped way better. It's just been downhill for Alexei Barkov, though. Ace King, nothing but trouble. But if there's no additional clubs that roll off, maybe there's a chance that Alexei can take this one down just by being the aggressor. Ten of spades on the turn means the board pairs. If we bet a good again card. here, yeah, I don't think he's gonna bet again. But I was gonna say it's a good card because oftentimes he will just get to show down, actually get to check check as long as uh, because the Boris will want to show down his ace five more uh, once it pairs like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, hey, he's safe. He's running good now, right? Could have lost <laughs> <Nana>. that pot, <laughs> mate. <laughs> you gotta slow down. <laughs> It's like, I've never seen a commentator on Tilt, but we may actually have a premiere here at the uh, High Roller Super Millions. All right, Simon Higgins gets folded to him. He's got Jack Nine of Clubs. I think uh, Queen Nine probably won't defend unless you're very ice-seam aware, but I feel like with Queen Nine, it's worth a defend and you just try to flop something and get go for it and pick up some chips. Well, flopping top pair definitely qualifies as flopping something. Would we always just call here to that tiny bet? Or do you think there is an argument to raise? 
I feel like if you, I think there's an argument for raising actually. Um, Queen seven seven rainbow, like you check called as flop, they know you got something anyways. Maybe just shut out the equity ace or king roll off. It's pretty much a disaster. Can't really pay off too much more. Um, most people just call because it's the simpler way to play it. But I wouldn't, I would have faulted a raise. Well, Mario is going to check the turn when the Eight of Spades rolls off. Simon Higgins will continue piling on the aggression. It makes a, a slightly bigger bet on the turn. This time, Marius may just get it all in. And, nope. Calls again. Deuce of Spades. Kind of a brick, even though the backdoor flush draw does get there. But don't think that these yep. guys are super concerned about it. Well, Higgins at this point knows his opponent has at least a queen. Um, yep. So I doubt he was going to just go for it one more time. On the turn, he was trying to bluff the ace highs pretty much specifically. Uh, but uh, swingy, swingy game for everyone so far. Yeah, even our chip leader. He lost a whole bunch of chips and then he gets aces. And now he's back to being the chip leader. And he's like, I've got even more chips than I started this final table with. Great news there for Anatoly Filatov as he picks up his first hand of the night. And uh, definitely could have been busted already when he had the pocket tens. We've got aces for Julian Stewart in the big blind, but nobody else really has anything. Man, ace, that's so many aces today and ace king so far. We've barely even started. Uh, Daniel Divorce is going to get a little action. I wonder if Julian Stewart is going to go for the three bet, which is a standard play, but there's a chance maybe he just smooth calls. But with 30 big blinds, I think he's more likely to throw in a three bet. I think if he was playing like 10 big blinds less, he probably would just call and try to trap his opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think with this, it's just a little, a little bit too much not to three raise. Let's hope Daniel Devores doesn't get super out of line and thinks that Julian is making a move on him, but uh, he doesn't. He gets the fault. Well done. That means that we still have all nine players with us. Vlad Martinenko has been uh, very quiet. But to be fair, he really didn't have many opportunities to make a play, other than the ace-10 offsuit, perhaps, but it wasn't that great. I don't mind him waiting so far. Looks like, um, I think two sixes is, he's very tempted to shove because it's Daniel Divorce who opens wider, but uh, I think they're all waiting for Vlad to get, to get it in first. It's not a very pretty flop for the sevens, I think. Kind of, oh my God. Two overs already. Alexei obviously picks up the gut shot. Let's see what Daniel Devoris decides to do. Could represent one of the aces. He's going for a tiny bet. I think Alexei for this price, peel one off. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You're going to peel uh, drawing to the nuts um, with King 10. And, you know, the King or 10 could be potentially good if you spike it. Uh, the, when the price is that small, you just, you just have to call uh, with those spots. King high here. It's like I think it's a little bit hard to win. He does chop sometimes. He might fire out a bet. Uh, but it looks like he gave it up. I do absolutely believe that if that ace-king didn't happen, he would fire on a board like this with this hand. But, you know, mm. you wait a day and a half to play your final table. You come in as third and you have a decent start with the queens. And then you lose a monster pot with ace-king versus aces. I understand being a little gun-shy then. And I think that's why Barkov didn't go for it. Well, do you think Vlad is going to reshut the two sevens in the spot or just see a flop? He's got 11. I think he's going to see a blinds. flop. I think, I think he's going to see a flop. Or maybe he shoves on Simon, actually, because Simon has been very active so far in this final table. So maybe Vlad is not going to give him all the credit. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I like, I like it. Yep. Wow, snap like call snap by call. Simon Higgins. Doesn't give a damn. Ace Jack versus sevens. Uh, oh, seven of clubs. That's a great flop for the sevens. And there we go. A double up for the man who's been on an absolute heater over at GG Poker, winning three WSOPC side events and now getting the double up at the High Roller Super Millions. And Simon Higgins is just riding world's biggest roller coaster at this point. Like <laughs> the, the things that this man has seen in 22 minutes is more than most people see at the final table. Like, oh, you. You were saying that Vlad is the guy who's running hot and it doesn't matter how few chips he's got because if he's going to win those all-ins of uh, two sevens coin flip in it, he's going to just never bust and he'll, he's going to get a top stack. Maybe it's just ship this tournament end up today. 
Julian Stewart with the Queens. Should put in a three bet here, right? Against Daniel. Yep. Daniel's probably getting a little tired of Julian three betting him. He's like, man, you just did that when you were in the big blind. Julian's like, yeah, I had aces and now he's doing it again. Now he's got Queens. 10-9 is a pretty hand to see a flop with. Well, he doesn't do it. Yeah, very tempting. And even though the three bet was quite small from Julian, mm -hmm. you know, these, they understand the pressure and they don't want to. You just feel like Daniel Voris is always raising, though. But he keeps getting like three bet or getting a little bit of action here and there. Well, um, he's going to get three bet again then. <laughs> yeah, he is going to get three bet again. And he's going to fold again. And the thing is, he's going to feel like people are just bullying him around a little bit. But actually, they've been picking up some hands. Ace King offsuit is the hand that Barkov got in a lot of trouble with earlier. This time, he's facing a hand that his hand does a lot better against. Daniel may be very tempted to be like, oh, I can't keep folding, right? If I keep opening and I keep folding to three bets, they're going to do this all night long. But this is not the moment to get out of line. Makes the call <laughs> with the ace 10 of hearts. And Barkov is like, damn it, here we go again. You know, it's the meme of the guy walking in the alley. Ah, oh, shit, here we go again. I don't know <laughs> if you know that, but it's like ace king uh, doesn't flop anything. Oh my gosh, and Alexei might lose his pot somehow. Because uh, the thing is, he was, Dan Divorce been getting three bets so much, he's like, man, I got to defend now. Uh, it's just been too many times. And that's, I think, because normally he probably would fold. It does go check again on the turn. Alexei tempted to bet to kind of just shut it down. But uh, if he bets and Daniel raises, which I don't know if Daniel could do that, but nope, it goes uh, check, check on the turn. The queen of spades doesn't change that much. Let's see if Daniel decides to fire on the river after his flush doesn't get there. I think Divorce really thinks Alexei's got ace king. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a. Uh interesting bluff here it's a small bet it kind of looks like a field bet like i got the king queen i got the ace queen please pay me off of ace king um most people don't really make this kind of a one-third bet on a river uh as a bluff and alexa is in a, a tricky spot because ace king is the nut nothing but mm -hmm. it lo really looks like he's getting value bet here but the thing is his opponent's actually bluffing him wow tricky. he does fall though it does fold. So Daniel DeVoris picks up the pot with Ace Danvers, Ace King, and things are going down <laughs> south real quick for Alexei Barkov. You got to feel it this way. Even though you got money on Alexei Barkov, he should be out of the tournament. If he jams, you know, that Ace King Aces, he could be out. So he's free rolling his 1.5 million chips. Does that make you feel a little bit better? No, it doesn't. But I, I don't think that's <laughs> totally true, Nano. Like, I think if they have less big blinds, then I'd be like, yeah, okay, he could have been out. But I don't think there's any reason to bust if you are, let's say, how many big blinds would they have? Like 80, 70 they, big blinds when that hand they started? They had 70 at the time they had. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're second in chips and you're duking it up with a chip leader, ace, king, offsuit, do you really want to bust there against the chip leader? I don't think that's necessary. Yeah, but I'm telling you, these guys might. But regardless, it's Anatoly, three bet and the ace jack chip leader, going to send a little bit of chips over to to him. And uh, no bust outs, and, uh, but the chip stacks are just evening out right now. Yeah, oh, man. Anatoly is uh, doing pretty decent, right? He's only played two hands, but he's won both hands. That makes you feel good. You don't have to get involved all the time. Nick Petrangelo could be in a little bit of trouble. He's probably going to open up ace nine offsuit. Simon Higgins, the man who's been on the roller coaster of a lifetime. I hope this he is might... not the moment you make a move. Yeah. No, he falls. Good okay. thing he wasn't on tilt, right? Because sometimes when you just lose these chips, you're like, man, I know I need to reshove and just pick up those uh, those antes. And thank God he didn't because he would be out of this tournament. Yep. Daniel's like, finally the tables are turned. Somebody else is opening. And now I'm the one who can uh, throw in a little three bet. It's fun as well to see these two uh, big names duke it out with each other. It's a fun little dynamic, but then against Big Blind. Yes. So did we get a little frozen? No, yes, we're back, yes. we're back. But we're back. <laughs> there is color in our life again, Nano. Let's go. <laughs> Hasn't worried. So you know what it looks like to these guys, though? It does look like there's a lot of pre-flop progression. The thing is, people have been waking up with hands. They have been doing it with garbage hands. Uh, 
so but from their point of view no hold cards they were like man these everyone's just three betting each other you know every single <laughs> hand but they just keep picking up queens and ace king and aces and stuff this one could be funny ace jack with no spades against king jack with a spade goes check check on the flop a little bit surprised to see filatov check that flop what do you make of that nana he's got a different style uh i'll tell you that because that's been the standard is to bet but uh I think the idea is you kind of roll one off so your opponent doesn't check, doesn't check raise like a king of spades and just force you to a tough spot for all your chips at this point. Playing the ICM and, you know, two pairs is feeling pretty good. Yeah, he, he's never folding here. But Marius decides not to bet. He is obviously the shortest stack at the final table at this point. Filatov Lobby feeling real good about his two pair. Going to see if Marius wants to pay him off with maybe a weaker ace or maybe a yeah, queen. I don't think he's paying off with the king jack, though. No. Uh, so I'm picking up some more chips. I want to see That's three for three. That's my pick to win. It makes sense that he's doing all right. Uh, three for three. I mean, if he wins tonight, I won't be upset. I fight a little bad on Filatov. So Daniel Devoris picks up another monster. This feels like it's truly Christmas time already over here at GG Poker now. Now everybody's getting monsters. As Daniel had queens two hands ago, now gets kings. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Christmas well, for Ching Yun. <laughs> yeah, bad Santa crying of Christmas. My, wow, that's brutal. I was going to say, Daniel DeVoris has been having a really sick run this final table so far. Let's go check. But um, Xing Yun, is he going to is he gonna start firing out? Is, it's hard to... You're like, I got yeah, a full house. It. The check is really smart because Daniel will definitely bet now. And he may, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. This hand is going to be gnarly for Daniel DeVoris. I can see Xing Yun raise here, right? Like, just get some chips in the pot because otherwise you just call. You're going to play a river and there isn't that much to play for. So I'd absolutely love to see a check raise here. And I think that's what he's going for. There we go. There's a check raise. And Dan DeVoris definitely not folding two kings at this point. Um, he knows his hand looks weak. He knows his hand looks like an ace high. He needs to start paying off with the two kings. Uh, sometimes you just got to be like, if you got it, you got it. That is a good river card for Daniel DeVores because double paired, flush getting there. He might just think like he can easily get away from his hand now. I don't know if he's going to get away from the kings that easily. Folding kings is never easy. Let's see what the bet is going to be. Maybe 550, 600k, 650, 700? Yeah. Xing Yu's thinking, oh man, what if he's got a jack himself? I would stack him for the whole stack. The thing is, I don't think Xing Yu should think his opponent has a jack too often because he didn't bet the flop. And you can see he's going a little greedy, going for the pot size bet. Because, you know, a lot of times the guy, if he had a jack, he probably would have bet that flop. So uh, we'll see what happens. It, um, uh, it's interesting. I guess the bet size also looks like he's trying to move his opponent off a of flush. Mm -hmm. which is very possible because uh, his opponent didn't bet the flop, so he knows his opponent doesn't have a full house very often. Wow, oh, he does pay oh, off, oh. and this Xing Yun is a massive chip lead. Daniel DeVoris is like, yeah. I got the king of clubs, I call, you don't, can't have a flush, and that's very well done. Yeah. I mean, at that point, your kings do kind of become a bluff catcher, right? Because even if Xing Yun uh -huh. only had a four, it does make a full house still, so... But it is such a good bluff catcher, and it's hard to let it go. Alexei Barkov walked, uh, wakes up with pocket queens under the gun. And Nick Petrangelo sitting here with ace eight suited. I don't know if he thinks of making a move, but this would be the wrong moment to make a move. Yeah, he looks like he really wants to. He is going to lose some chips here. Uh, Petrangelo's like, man, all these guys put all this money on me. I haven't done anything at this final table. Let me show them my moves and... Insta gonna get punished and uh we all in here right here yeah your guy is back okay two million in chips feeling a little better now <laughs> come on ah uh, yeah wait yeah no nah, two million is nothing and you started the final table <laughs> with 3.1 Anoko. what do you mean what are you trying to do over here <laughs> well this is such a cool start to our final table we still have all nine players with us it seems that everyone, other than maybe Marius and Vlad Martinenko, have been getting very involved, very active. We've all played a couple of big pots already. 
I think that Anatoly Filatov is feeling very good about his final table so far, Neno. He's played three hands, but he won all three of them. Uh, he started the final table with how many chippies? Uh, I'm trying to find him. Uh, he started 1. with 1.6. No, 1.6, actually. So, oh, so he's, nothing's really changed for him. <laughs> ah, 400k is pretty good, you know. <laughs> It's really just been Alexei losing some chips and Simon Higgins. Uh, other than that, everything looks all right. Wow. Just a call, actually, with the ace-queen. I like it. Uh, I think three-betting is fine, too. Um, but with ace-queen, when you flat, you do let worse hands continue. That definitely would not be calling a three-bet, like queen-jack. Uh, he's in prime position to get some chips out of Petrangelo. Petrangelo might put in, like, multi-barrels, potentially. You think our chip leader is just calling here again? Yeah. All right, man. That's such a perfect turn. That's the uh, absolute brick. I mean, sure, Deuce 5 gets there, but who really gives a damn about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the pocket... The, he's got to be worried about the pocket fours that you always talk about. They always make a set, although they never make a set yeah. on no, our No, you know what? I, I, I am backpedaling on pocket fours, always making a set. I played a little bit of poker this week and a couple times. Did I put in way too many chips with pocket fours, Nanonoko? Yes, I did, because I told my stream, don't worry, you always make a set. Uh, no sets to be seen. I'm starting to lose my faith in uh, pocket fours. It's it's terrible. <laughs> you can't let your stream down, though. You know they they're, they're going to start teasing you when you fold pocket fours and it starts oh. hitting sets, and then you know it's just every it's just how the world of poker works. It really is. I'm actually uh, I'm kind of done finally with all my crazy Starcraft adventures. Or obviously you still have some stuff. Hey, Vlad Martinenko. Speaking of pocket fours. Uh, he's going to let it go because he's been playing tight. I, I don't think he does much. <laughs> maybe maybe you call. Better hope. No! Oh. He, one four left in the deck, too. Oh, oh, oh. Well, speak pocket fours. Always make a set, yes or no. Alexei Barkov will make the call with the tens. And you said one four was gone? Yep, one four is gone. Oh, poor Vlad Martinenko. I guess every heater comes to an end, unless this is a four. It is not. And that means that Alexei Barkov does pick up. Oh yeah, Filatov had a four of clubs. And that means we finally, after 34 minutes of poker, lose one of our players. It was the man who came in as short a stack tonight, Vlad Martinenko. He did have a double up. Man, I feel sorry. What if he thought, like, I've been watching these guys, and I always mention that the fucking boys always make a set. And then he gets it in there, and he bust. <laughs> It's very possible. Um, you know, he was on a heater, like you said. He won three side events uh, during WSOPC, I believe. And then uh, yeah, all heaters do come to an end. Not going to happen for him today, but he did come in as a shortest deck. And looks like that 27 to 1 odds no longer exists. Nope. He gets $57,000 for making final table, though, so hopefully he still feels pretty good about that. You guys perhaps heard my alarm go off. That means it's time for our second free roll of the night. Password is a super. So super as in the high roll is super millions. Just open the client, take a look at the free roll section. Password super. Good luck to all of you guys if you participate in it. And the rich cat, richer, oh, oh no, what the nano. No, no, this could get out of line. Ace King suited for a chip leader. Alexei Barkov is going to put in a three bet with the pocket queens. This could be a big one. Yeah, and Alexei has his starting stack from this final table. And I think Shin Yun just ships this in. Um, your opponents could easily be three bet bluffing you, Ace King. Oh, he just calls. Okay, so these two guys, they've been playing big pots, with each, big hands against each other, but have not been able to stack off, uh, surprisingly. Uh, I would bet pretty big here, right? Like with queens, like uh, I don't think we go for a tiny bet. Like it has to be like uh, 350 to 400. K, yeah, you know? I think about three, three, three hundred something makes sense. Um, he is going to go with 300k, but uh, Xing Yun, I think he's still call base king though. Oh, oh god, god, the ace! Hey, think about it this way: Alexei could have lost all his chips here. Could have. <laughs> yeah, he could have. Let's could've. see what Alexei Barkov does. After the Ace of Space rolls off on the turn, that is obviously one of the two cards he really didn't want to see. It looks like Alexei will either do a small bet check back river or he's going to check and play the river card, which is going to be very, very tough. Um, 
Where are my ladies at, Nenonoko? Any ladies watching <laughs> they, the stream? They're not, they're, they're, they're not here. He's going to um, go for the small bet, trying to get, you know, he doesn't want his opponent to set the price on the river card. You know, his opponent could easily still have nines, tens, jacks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, seems seems pretty good to me. Xing Yun thinking about putting in a raise now. He is out of position. Uh, oh, that's not a good card for Alexei at all, right? Now you're like, maybe he doesn't have it. I still think he checks, though. Yeah, yeah, He absolutely. does still... Off the queen's definitely in the best hand a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's Check. it's greedy to go for another bet. There you go. Safe. Well, that means Alexei Barkov falls back to 2 million. So he was at 3 million for literally one hand. And our chip leader, could we really have the man who comes in as chip leader win four weeks in a row at the High Roller Super Millions? It'd be insane. A lot of people didn't believe in him. Only 34 bets out there on the man who came in as chip leader tonight. Obviously, he did have the lowest odds, but he is looking mighty fine, Nano. He entered the final table with, what was it, 4.3? 4.6 million, and he's at 7.6 now. Yeah, he's, do he's doing great. Marius, I think 2.8, you just got to go for it. You're the shortest stack. You got fold yeah. equity with these amount of blinds. I'd be... I don't really see why you wouldn't shove, especially against Petrangelo, who would open wider with these stack sizes. And I think we're going to see another confrontation. Yep, ace queen suited is not going anywhere. So let's see if the eights can hold up or if we are down to seven. The eights are not looking too good at this point. We need an eight and an eight only for Marius, or he too will be bamboozled. And we are down to seven, Danny. Marius walks away with $72,000. And Nick Petrangelo finally wins a big one, which kind of brings him back exactly to the amount of chips that he started this final table with. <laughs> Exactly. Um, you know, you know what you need. I figured it out, Rowdy. Today may be your day because Anna's Holy is the one that we share, where we both win. You win some monies. It's the guy I pick to win. Uh, I think that what you need to do is make sure we share the person in our final table because otherwise, your guys are just going down and down every single time. You know. Yeah. Well, maybe Barkov can make a little comeback here. Ace King on the big line against that chip leader. Expecting a three bet. I'd make it. Oh, okay. That's very adventurous. Hmm. He's like, I'm done. Uh, I'm done like three betting smaller and losing the pots of Ace King. Because yeah, I remember he lost Ace King to Ace 10 against Daniel yeah. Divorce, who got bluffed off of, right? And he's like, I'm done. I'm all in. Screw it. Next day, Barkov now in the small blind as we have a little Russian battle unfolding here. That's actually here. kind of fun. Filatolov flops the gut shot, but obviously that's the same gut shot that Barkov has as well, but Barkov also flopping mid-pair. Doesn't happen often to flop mid-pair with a pair of fives, Nano, but in this case, it's happening. Yeah, now she... The, gut shot, the other gut shot's got a heart draw. He might be tempted to bet, um, but it looks like it's... Filatolov is just like, yeah, try to show down this king high. And it's going to feel pretty good with 5-3 officer just getting a showdown and winning this one, I think. Yep. Uh, Filatolov, uh, I think, is playing very conservative tonight. Doesn't really want to get in any trouble if he doesn't have to. I don't think you can really blame him. So far, things have been going all right for him. No monster pots heading his way yet, but he's also the only one who's not getting any monster hands yet. Everybody else has been uh, getting at least one or two pretty hands. Alexia lets this one go. This was an entire round of garbage. And Nick Petrangelo is the one who walks away with it with the 7-4 on the big line. Yeah, I think Xing Yun's going to open this one up. Here we go. Um, Petrangelo, two jacks. What's the play? He is in second place. So some guys actually just flat call here. No. Uh, because it's no, I'm saying some guys do. I'm not saying Petrangelo is going to do it. Yeah. Because they're first and second. Just remember that one guy who flatted the two. Okay. He does flat two jacks. Uh, it's just like you don't want to get it in. You get three. You three bet, and you get the best thing to happen when you three bet is they just fold. Uh, because it's you know annoying post flop if you don't hit a jack. Uh, but he's definitely going to probably call down multiple bets here if he had to. Uh, but it just kind of forces you not to bust before all these other guys, too. Like, I, I can get it, but Jax is still so damn good. I definitely think I would have gone for uh, 
the three bet, especially because you're in the small blind and you're kind of pricing in the big blind too, I think, if you're calling, right? Because the race obviously wasn't that big. And now all of a sudden you're playing a three-way pot with jacks. And I think those are a lot harder to win. But what do I know? Nick Petrangelo is obviously one of the very best. And he decided to play his jacks like this. Xing Yun could absolutely exactly. uh, put in some Exactly what you said. What do you know, Roddy? No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Not much, mate. I'm the first to admit it. <laughs> Two jacks here. All right. So he's going to check call here, I imagine. You know, when you take this kind of line pre-flop based on the stack sizes and just flop and turn checks, uh, you'd, you'd be very surprised if you just started raising. But this is what happens when you play the hand this way. And that's what you That's saying. what I know, what? Nano. That's what I know, okay? <laughs> exactly. Um, that is one of the problems when you go super ICM heavy. You let your opponents, our chip leaders, get away with pots they shouldn't be winning. Um, the pros and cons. And the worst thing here as well is that Nick Petrangelo has the jack of hearts. So I think it's a little less likely that you think your opponent has the flush. Now the king is scary in it by itself. That is a massive bet by our chip leader. I actually think that Petrangelo could get away from this. Well, last time he, there was a pot size bet. <laughs> nope. The, 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 <laughs> sometimes you're too good for your own kind, right? You got the jack of hearts. I blocked the flush. So you would embed a king queen this way, and you know, Ching Yu is just getting paid off by the two big names, Daniel Navarro and Petrangelo, on these uh pretty tough yeah. boards. Uh, but these overpairs are just like I can't fold. He is dominating at this point. He almost has more chips than all other players combined. Then, I'm like, he's not there yet, but he's very close. That's insane. Three, five. Yeah, he's like a million something short versus the rest of the table. Anyway, I'll focus on this one. As Ace Jack Suited is going to get it all in, Daniel DeVores will let go of his fives. And then let's say Barkov will probably let go of his sevens. I think it's a bit too much for pocket sevens. Yeah, I don't think the sevens should be calling here. I don't think Simon Higgins has been too out of line either. Be pretty adventurous. Yeah, I just don't see it happening. I think the best thing you can hope for is a flip, but then you're still flipping for a lot of your stack at that point. Plus, Simon Higgins definitely reshoving two eights and two nines. He's not reshoving two deuces, mm -hmm. threes, and fours in this spot. So you're even more worst case scenario to flip. Um, yeah. Or best case scenario. <laughs> worst yeah, yeah, case scenario, yeah, no. you're completely <laughs> dominated. <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's like, well, he could have pocket sixes. It's like, then you're really tell, talking yourself into a call. You're like, what is the one hand that I do really well against? It's like, well, he could have pocket sixes. He too could have pocket sevens. It happens every now and then, you know. But like, well, that's, uh, I don't think we really want to go down that road. And we don't need to enter that territory. Barkov opening up here with king, queen, offsuit under the gun. He's definitely... Uh, Adventurous, gets out there. He's very active, likes to get involved and takes this one down. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed, Nano. Uh, I, I don't think you've noticed, but the snap cams are back. I can finally send very annoying videos again to the rest of the table. And it's, uh, oh, did they turn it off or what happened? Yeah, there was a little bug with uh, people that also had OBS, the streaming software installed. And then it, for some reason, like I couldn't open GG Poker one day and I was like, what? So I contacted the guys from GG. I was like, I have no idea what's happening, but I can't open uh, GG. And they're like, hmm, let's get back to you. And then we figured out that it had to do with OBS. And they're like, thanks for letting us know. And then they kind of temporarily disabled it, but the snap cams are back. And I love the snap cam, man, especially in the big tournaments. I make a video every 50 minutes. It's like, guys, congratulations for making level seven, you know, and the rest of the table is like, <laughs> shut the F up already. Like, they couldn't be bothered. <laughs> you, you find a guy with the most blocked, uh, Absolutely. you know, yeah. Yeah, on the table. Well, there are a couple of guys that also, as we take a look at our chip leader, is kind of just casually tree betting with queen nine suited. Nick Petrangelo with Ace Jack. Let's see what he does before we this continue cool. talking about snap cams. <laughs> Everyone's been kind of like, wow, and look, it's a nice four bet with the Ace Jack. That's a nice read there. Um, because everyone's been playing some pretty good cards. And, you know, finally, Xing Yun, you know, gets out of line there with the Queen Nine suited. And against a lot of guys, it would work, but not against Petrangelo with the Ace Jack. Uh, that's really nice. 
I think the one thing I have going for myself while maybe not having the most amount of blocks is that a lot of poker players that don't stream have terrible uh, microphones, like absolutely atrocious. So when they make a little video, it just sounds like they have a microphone that picks up everything that happens in their entire neighborhood and it's like 300% <laughs> volume. You're like, no, stop using your microphone. So at least I am not annoying in that regard, but yeah, my videos, maybe not everyone's a fan. This could be a fun one. We saw Simon Higgins get it in with Ace-Jack before. If he does it this time, Nano, he could get called by Alexei Barkov. Definitely. He's playing 23, 24 big blinds. I think the Ace-Queen... I think we're calling it. You just side call it off. Yep. Uh, especially if your phone's jumping Ace-Jack. Yeah, I think you just got to side call it off here. You're not loving it, but... If you're folding ace queen, I don't know what you're calling yeah. in, right? I think we're going to call this one. It's not the first time Simon Higgins has done it. Alexei is obviously very aware of that. No, he folds the ace queen offsuit. Okay. Ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not sure if he either. Looks <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Uh oh, Filatov could be in trouble. Filatov could be in a lot of trouble in this one as he has ace queen offsuit. Hasn't played a lot of hands. Simon Higgins has just been jamming left, right, and center. So if he jams now again, he's going to get less and less credit. And this is exactly what you're hoping for if you play like that. Exactly. And, I mean, Filatov has been a little snug. So there's a chance he lets go of ace-queen, too. I mean, if the other guy's folding ace-queen... Yeah, he should be folding ace queen, right? <laughs> back to back jams. Like you're not giving him credit for ace king here. I, I'd be so impressed if Filatov lets this one go. It is kind of for his tournament life, and maybe he doesn't want to put his tournament life on the line with ace queen offsuit. That's only thing that I can really get behind. But we both need this one. We both need him to I fold. Know. <laughs> fold. No. We'll see what Filatov decides to do. Hmm. And Higgins, oh, oh, he makes the call. So, Filatov is not at risk, but he kind of is. And he needs a queen. We could chop it up with another three. We could chop it up with a three, four, or a five. Hey, that's a lot of outs. Three, four, five, queen. Uh, no. No. We both lose together, Roddy. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> it's not uh, good for us. It's not, yeah. Like Go you ahead. said, though, like, we've seen this guy jam three times in the last four hands. You just got to be thinking, like, he's got to be up to no good at some point. Um, and it's funny because Alexei could have been the one who knocked out Simon Higgins by ace-queen versus ace-jack. But instead, mm -hmm. it's just somehow Anatoly losing all the chips and Simon Higgins being a bit rewarded. Yep. This is uh, not the most amount of chips that Simon Higgins has had tonight. He was over 3 million at one point, but he's kind of back to where he was before his downfall started. So that's great news for him. Filatov will get it all in with the 10-7 suited for three big blinds and some change. And he's definitely going to get called by our big blind. Here we go. We can run it up. We got to start from 160k. <laughs> Comeback time. 10-7 suited. There you go. <laughs> Need to avoid aces and sixes. No ace, no six. And Filatov is back to seven big blinds. And he's safe. Seven BB and a dream, Nananoko. Here we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. You know, like you got to start from the bottom. <laughs> I don't think Filatov is feeling very good about it. But, oh, ace he's, queen. <laughs> he's back. He's got, he's got 10 big blinds coming up pretty soon. Yeah, no one really has the hand to call. If it was a bounty tournament, I could see our chip leader calling, but obviously there's absolutely no reason for him to put in these chips with 9-8 offset. It would be fun to do a high roller super millions bounty version once. That would make our final <laughs> table commentary really exciting, I think. It'd be real fun because you'll be seeing these crazy calls and then you're going to see like, you know, 50K knockouts and, and yeah. plus you get the pay jumps as well. It'd be really, it'd be something to watch for sure. Maybe we could talk Gigi into it for the anniversary edition, you know, the 50th edition <laughs> or something like that. Make it a bounty. <laughs> nah, that'd, that'd be really cool. I'd love to see it. I like, I don't, doesn't when you bust out someone in a bounty tournament, dude, there's like little gunshots come out too, like, yep. Yeah, some okay. good sound effects. <laughs> yeah. 
Simon Higgins with the hand that has been uh, very well for him. Well, has been doing very well. Just keeps kind of jamming with Ace Jack, obviously, as he's opening now. I do think Filatov could should at least call, right? At least call. He's going to call. Shove. He won't shove because his hand doesn't have fold equity with this deck size and these positions. Mm -hmm. So um, you will just see him just see a flop. Any piece, just this one, he's just going to ship it in. Yeah. Uh, and Ace Jack might look him up. I'm not too sure. I think I'll, yeah. Because he's obviously not, he doesn't have a deuce. He could have a five or a six, though. Oh, it's a bet. Well, it's a small bet. It's very interesting. I guess, yeah, I'm not too sure. But uh, I'll tell you this if he decides to jam now, he definitely won't work. No. Ace Jack with top pair. Feel it tough with a decision. Does he feel like he can run it up from six big blinds? Do we give up or do we try to steal it away? Seems like he's giving up. That means at least we still have seven players. I mean, somehow he's he survived here because I would think he would definitely shove that turn a lot. Would get looked up by Ace Jack a decent amount. Uh, but he's, he's still in it. He's got two threes for a chance for... Uh, actually, he'll be in good position against the Ace Two suited Ace if he decides yeah. to go in. A very good position. You don't often have over cards <laughs> when you have pocket threes. Uh, he obviously needs to avoid the aces, needs to avoid flushes and straights, but this is about as good as it gets for pocket threes. Needs to avoid a king too, though. No king, no ten, no ace, <laughs> no queen. <laughs> so a lot of odds. That's good. Wow, well, full house. Pocket threes make a full house, and Filatov is back to 700k. All right. You feel good about those ones, though, when you know that he's like, oh, you see the paired board, and you're like, oh, no, you know, I'm going to get counterfeited for sure, but yeah, he holds. Everyone else has got to be a little bit salty, right? They can't, like, can't, I can't believe this guy with 150k actually has a stack <laughs> to play for now, because now with 12 big blinds, you can wait around. Now you're forced to play, and a queen 10 suit is opening up. Now you're going to get three bet. Julian Stewart's like, oh, my God, this is terrible. Yep. Nick Petrangelo definitely three betting the ace king. Probably not too happy with how his checks played out. That was a painful <laughs> one. Makes it 420. I wonder if these guys ever giggle when they make it 420. <laughs> Could make it 420. <laughs> 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 Julian Stewart may decide to go for it here with the pocket eights. What I can tell you now is that these pocket eights would have never made a set because all the <laughs> eights were gone. <laughs> I don't fault him for folding there. He's playing 24 big blinds against Ender Gun. Um, I think he does have a lot of fold equity for sure, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm totally sure. But we got a break. Send him, send him out, Rowdy. Yep. Well, guys, we've got five minutes, so we're going to take a little moment for ourselves. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying our coverage so far of the 28th edition of the High Roller Super Millions that's being played over at GG Poker. All players pay $10,300 to participate in the event, and it starts on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, if you live in Europe. And then they play down to the final nine. These were the nine players that we had coming into the final table tonight. And so far, everything is going in order. Martinenko was the shortest stack. Marius was the second shortest stack. It was a very fun hour. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, like I said. And we'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. Make sure to follow the YouTube channel or subscribe to the YouTube channel, I should say. If you haven't done that yet, we don't just have this show. We've got another final table coming up this weekend, the mini main. And then, of course, non-stop coverage of the Heads Up Challenge between Daniel and Doc. See you guys real soon.
in 30 seconds the action will continue i'm back nano is back as well and in these 20 seconds nano i can share with you something that you probably don't know but i spent uh, two hours this week with ben cb that's actually kind of cool okay well, we're just just hanging out what was, what was yep. going oh because of the gaming tournament yeah yeah, I casted indeed uh, the gaming tournament that Raise Your Edge organized, and I uh, also participated in it, and I did very well, by the way. I went undefeated, but my teammates let me down. But uh, yeah, he asked me, he's like, you want to come hang out on my stream for two hours? We'll just chat a little bit about gaming and poker. So that was very cool. He played some cash games, and he kept saying how he's a cash donk. He's like, so everybody should join immediately. That was really cool. He was just playing some casual 2550 cash games and then chatting with me about basically everything we had a lot of fun or at least i had a lot of fun but i think he enjoyed it as well yeah that's cool man he's a really nice guy and obviously a uh, good content good poker player and yeah that, that was very cool and uh right off the bat off the break ace three officer shing you shing you the mm -hmm. he's the one guy at our final table no uh with no real name but he's mm -hmm. playing excellent um, as a chip leader. And I think, man, we might have a four for four because this guy is definitely a professional poker player, knows what he's doing. Uh, and he's, he's just getting it done right now. And don't forget that up to this point, he only had $133,000 in winning over a GG. I mean, I say only. Obviously, that is a lot of money, but a lot of these guys have won millions on this platform. He came in with 133000 If he makes top five, he will already earn more tonight. Than he's done so far in his entire poker career over at GG. And something very weird has to happen for him not to finish top five. That would be the blow up of the century. That would be a Rune <laughs> F kind of blow up. <laughs> yeah, you're never going to forget the Rune F one. Yeah, that one was definitely a blow up. Um, yeah, here we go. So we are down to seven. Um, Everyone was waiting for Anatoly, still waiting for him, but you know, he is in position where to maybe come and come and run it back up. Your big this bet though, Alexei is still alive. I'm just telling you, just a reminder. Yeah, yeah. Two million is not that bad. When he was hovering around one four, I was like, oh no, get get me out of here. It's done. But at two million, I still kind of believe that the dream is alive. We've seen a lot of crazy things. Daniel Devoris finally picks up a pot again here with King Queen. He is looking pretty dire, man. 1.2 million. Big blind is 60k. Of course, the blinds go up based upon the amount of hands we play. You guys can always see that on the top left side of our uh, table. So we're currently at level 31. Often we make it to level 34, level 35, something among those lines. So I do think that we're in for a long run tonight. Unless uh, Xing Yan is just going to speed run this and take down everyone one by one. Feel it all if my chip seven jack, right? From the small blind. I think so. You got 10 big blinds. Um, you, you need some blinds and antis. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Um, it's you really taking it, a sweet time. Yeah, you don't love it, but I think you just kind of... Oh, wow, he doesn't he pull bolts. the trigger. I mean... I'm, yeah, I'm we, very we surprised there. <laughs> we knew that Nick had six dudes. He obviously doesn't. And tournament life is very precious. Wow, I chip played a folding pocket trees under the gun plus one. Yeah, he's just like, I don't play these little pocket pairs. I'll play anything else. Um, yeah, I'm quite surprised, especially because he's the clear short stack. There's no one else that's really going to bust anytime soon. Um, I guess, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you this. If Anatoly doesn't win, I'm never picking him again. I mean, obviously, you feel silly if you get snapped by some random ace and you have jack seven or like even hands like king, queen, king, jack could call you there because he doesn't have a lot of fold equity. You have a hand on folding between a small blind and big blind. Petrangelo flops mid pair. King high flush draw for Simon Higgins. He may, if this goes check again, I wouldn't mind Simon betting here, right? With the king high flush draw. Yeah, I think uh, he does have showdown value too, but I think he should con strongly consider a big bet. And he is going to get a big, a really big bet if it's an over bet. It's a little funny to put an over bet though, just because, um, I don't know, I feel like you would bet a flush draw on a flop, you would bet a set or two pair. So it just, so that's why actually he gets looked up by the 6-5 on a turn because the overbet is just a little bit too suspicious. 
That makes this a fun hand now. Petrangelo still just with a pair of sixes. Simon Higgins still with just king high. And he lets it go. So good call there by Nick Petrangelo. Very well done. Picks up a pot that's a little more than half a million. It's going to put him back to what he started this final table with. Or very close to. Yeah. Um, Petrangelo has been playing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he's got the same stack size as he came to the final table with. But he's been playing pretty good. He's been ha He's made some tough tough decisions um and it's been right uh most of the time filatov let's go of the queen 10 here with a little less than 10 big blinds it's obviously not the best hand you could hope for but what you said i think is very true you do want to pick up some blinds and empties every now and then otherwise even soon when you double up you're still going to be by far and away the shortest stack and they will still all just be waiting for you no i guess he's hoping for you know daniel divorce to just Three bet and just get it all in and lose. Um, but uh, Petrangelo he's got the flush draw. Um, he can put the pressure on his opponent. His opponent probably won't fold for one big blind. Uh, but if he can throw in another bet, he can really put. Oh, he did fold for one big blind. All right. Just see, that's the thing. When you got Anatoly there with short stack, you know, everyone starts to play pretty tight. And that's the time for Xing Yun and, and Petrangelo really just to open up their game. I can definitely see Petrangelo opening this one up, but Queen 10 is not going anywhere on the big blind. And since that chip leader has been pretty active, I could even see him once in a blue moon three betting here, but I think calling makes a lot more sense. That is what he goes for. Yeah, I think Queen 10 offsuit, it does decently well post flop, and there's no reason to three bet it from the big blind. Um, Petrangelo. Is going to check and make two pairs, and Xing Yu might be tempted to bet. And I couldn't fault him for throwing a bet out there. I think he can get a lot of better hands to fold. He is going to check, um, but I was going to say he, he could target those like pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens. I don't think those hands would, would call a turn bet. Um, but uh, at this point, uh, I just don't really think he can make some moves. I think I would call this. You know, it's not much, and you do have three clean you know, outs for the nuts. You don't want to draw to um, a straight on a flush if as much as yeah. you know, like because say like you hit the straight and you know your player has a flush draw, you hit the flush, you just it's kind of a bit bad to reverse implied odds. No, that's why I said three clean outs, not four. I'm aware of that, <laughs> Nanaka. <laughs> yeah, I'm like three. It's like such a weird, weird uh, number to say. Yeah, because you know, indeed, you don't want the flush to get there. But even if it does, I mean. You still have a straight. It's pretty good. But he decides to let it go for the two big blind bet. We can't really fault him for it. Because chasing gut shots is obviously not ideal. So we're on to the next one. Julian calls with king nine of spades. But it's a hard monotone board instead. Probably let this one go, right? Yeah. yeah I feel like there's not much to go on. Yeah, there's just not much to go for. Like, let's say you get the jack of hearts. It's like, well, <laughs> now I've got a straight, but now it's really bad. Because it's not a two-card combo that makes a flush, but one. It felt like we started this table off with just a, a tornado of action. But now ever since Filatov got short, it's kind of calming down a little bit. Everyone's playing a little more conservative. Let's see what Alexei Barkov decides to do here with his Queen Jack suited. Makes the call. Still behind, but does pick up a gut shot. I think people are thinking like, oh, there is a reminder when Anatoly was so short. Like, oh, yeah, we got to play tight in some spots, you know? It's like we might bust out before others. Um, so it's like it's kind of a little wake-up call to remind everyone. Uh, Xing Yun is going to bet uh, quite large here, two-thirds of yeah. the pot. Hmm. It's... Queen Jack, you still got to draw to the nuts, two overcards. It is a bigger bet, which you don't want to see. Um, but I still think I probably would peel off here. Uh, it is a big bet. That makes it annoying. But Alexei does make the call. The ace is no good for him. Let's yeah, see if I should read the bets again. He might be tempted just to muscle his way through on his turn card and just bet. Uh, he doesn't have anything, but um, if his opponent has a 9 or an 8, he probably won't call again unless it's got backed up by like some kind of draw. If his opponent has a straight draw, it's not going to continue. Um, I, yeah, I like, I like this bet a lot. Uh -huh. uh, Xing Yun's playing great. 
I mean, he's got the chips as well to play great, right? A little misstep at this point wouldn't hurt him, but he is still just getting richer. Now closing into 9 million chips. And then we are really reaching my favorite point where one player has more chips than the rest of the table combined. <laughs> and at that point, it feels like you're almost guaranteed a top two finish. Alexei is going to ship ace four offsuit from the small blind, knowing that Filatov has been pretty tight. And Filatov lets it go. The jack eight, I believe it was. Yeah, I mean, if I'm Xing Yun, I think I'm opening very wide now. Of course, King Queen suited, but just everyone else is playing very tight. Uh, so I think it's, I feel like it's free chips when you have this big of a chip lead. Because even Petrangelo is folding the hands that could definitely defend normally in most situations. But he's kind of protecting his chips. That King Queen here might just muck wow. it too, to be honest, uh, because of. Uh, how short Filatov is. Yep. He does fold. That is the correct fault because he definitely would have been called. But I also wouldn't have minded if he goes all in. Not because the hand is that amazing, but it's the chip leader who's clearly just trying to get rich here while everybody else is waiting. That is something you keep in the back of your mind. Yeah, for sure. Correct decision. Um, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, with King Queen, I guess the thing is. You'd rather have some other hands. I don't know. Ace 10 suited. Seems a little bit nicer. You block the hands that will call you like all the ace, big aces. Mm -hmm. Pocket pairs. Wow. Um, wow. Check race. I like the Simon Higgins. You know, Simon Higgins, like, I, I know all you nits out there. I'm going to defend against this chip leader. And he hits oh. a nut flush. And man, can you imagine if Simon Higgins, like, okay, I can represent a flush. I'm going to bet like a third on the turn and shove the river and just be bust them. This could be bad news. Wrong moment for Simon Higgins to make a play, and he does continue betting. We always just call here, right? Like, there's no need to ever race. You just call? Correct. Um, there really is. And if your opponent's making, you know, like a thin play of king-queen, you don't want him to fold that hand, and geez, Simon Higgins is... I told you he's going to bet a third on turn and just blast off. He might blast off no. on his river card. He might really feel like he should. When you Don't show up with it, Queen Simon. Nine in the spot. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, he doesn't lose everything, but he loses the majority of his chips. Man, Simon really doesn't like being at 3 million chips, does he? Every single time <laughs> he reaches the 3 million mark, he's like, how do I get rid of these things immediately? Well, this <laughs> is a great way. You're betting into the nuts. <laughs> yeah. Um... Poor guy. I really felt like that. Yeah, he was going to dust off some chips. You know, he didn't want to shove all in just because, you know, Anatoly, you know, might bust out. Look, I was just showing him no flushes, but he didn't have anything anyways. Two well, aces, though, rewarded. <laughs> See, he, he loses a bunch of chips, and now he's going to get a bunch of chips back. This hand could get really wild because I think Filatov might get it all in, right? If Alexei doesn't do anything. Yeah, I think you shove here. Now, and I think Petrangelo... I think he calls too. I think he reshoves and just gets us in. And oh. Simon Higgins just gets a triple up. Oh my goodness. Well, Simon Higgins, it was good knowing you at 1.1 million. You should be back to the 3 million chips that you don't really like to be at. A three way all in here. And I mean, a seven is unlikely because Filatov has a seven. So <laughs> this is pretty good. Oh, space. Oh my God. Filatov is going to win this hand. Is he? No, no. he is not. And that means that Filatov will go out in seven plays, walks away with $92,000. But Simon Higgins is back to 3 million chips. The question is for how long? Uh, oh, my God. For no not time. He's lost kidding. it all in the sand right here. Wow. Oh, my God. 100% loss. Always, he's out. And this is what the beginning of the final table was, right? Like where it's just craziness happened. But this is 100% no way he gets away from this. It does not matter. Look at the positions, too. Yeah. Chipley is already three bet queen nine suited. Like, this <laughs> no chance. This is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. Simon Higgins will think, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Finally, we're going to get that double up. And we're going to get way past the 3 million chip mark. Queens into aces. Here we go. Pre-flop all in. Can Simon Higgins find the queen that he's looking for? No, that's not a good one. Maybe a five? Oh, no. 
It's, Queen it's and Queen done. only. <laughs> okay. Just like that. Talk, talk us through the uh, the big stack versus the tiny stack things you like to talk. The statistics of how many chips everyone has. Oh my gosh. Well, that's very easy, right? It's 3.4 million, uh, 6.2, if I'm not, uh, let's say 6.2, something like that. Xing Yong has twice the amount of chips of the other four guys combined. We may actually go four for four when it comes to chip leaders winning the final table ever since final betting got introduced because this is not just a chip lead anymore. This is a monstrous chip lead over the entire table. Everybody else is officially short stack, Nano. There is no middling stack. There is no second place. We've got four short stacks and a chip leader. Wow. And uh, <laughs> this, there's no way Xing Yun doesn't lose this, this tournament, I feel like. I mean, like, there's a chance, but top two is certainly locked up 100%. And the thing is with these dynamics, too, because everyone, there's like the divorce and Stewart and these guys are quite short. Pete, they're going to play pretty tight, I'll tell you. And just Xin is going to get extra chips here. He tried to get away with this 10 3 offsuit. Don't think it's going to work. Julian Stewart, I think he should just rip it in. Uh, wow. Hope okay. for the best. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I like the play, but on the other hand, I also understand it's scary, right? Because Daniel Devoris is uh, like less than a million chips, and even Alexei is within striking distance. And we often talk about in these MTTs, all the money is in the top three. So it's like, yeah, you can just get it in with your flush roll, but you're going to be pretty sour if you bust when you look around you, and the other guys are pretty short too. Yeah. Um, you do want to avoid all ins if you can, but with high, you still get in your very high equity situations. So like blind versus blind, king high flush for all. You know the king is also good if you do happen to hit, and also obviously all the fold equity too. Um, two ace mediums in there on a, on a pretty good board where I think both people might think they're the the best hand. But I uh, we'll see if Alexei check calls of ace five. Um, you might just let it go, but I mean, for one big blind dog, it's yeah. really hard to let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Picks up a gut shot on the turn. But Ace nine still in the lead. Yeah, Devoris. Uh, he might throw in like a, a quarter pop bet. Just check back that river card. It's possible. Uh, looks like they're going to go check, check. And that means that Daniel Devoris is good because the nine plays. These are really annoying spots, I think, for Alexei Barkov. He's like, oh, like, really? We don't even chop with these two hands against each other? That's Look, a good one from for my, Daniel. From my point of view, Alexei Barkov could have been out a long time ago with that uh, ace-king versus two aces. So he's pretty much free-rolling all these pay jumps, right? He's getting a lot of pay jumps. So, you know, he's, he's feeling good. And, you know, you got he is your pick to win. My pick is gone. He's also the guy you got money on. So... Uh, he's got a chance with the ace five. I wonder if he's thinking about limp jamming this hand. Yeah, Petrangelo gonna put the pressure on queen six. I don't think I he will. I, I would like it, but I don't think he will. I feel like I don't know, 23, 24. Oh, he is oh. gonna. So, this is there we go because that's the play you should be doing because you're expecting the second place guy to raise your limps a ton, especially with Petrangelo's style. I think Julian could be in a bit of trouble here if uh, Xing Yun decides not to open, but he does open. So now I think it's a little easier to let the King Jack go. Yep. I think Petrangelo just he might just rip it in uh, potentially because. Uh, I mean, three bets are standard, but there's some people just three bet ship it in. They're like, oh, the other guy's a little bit too short. I don't want to call some stupid interaction. So there, there he goes, just rips it in. Because like, let's just say you three bet the 450K, 500K, and your opponent has two eights and just ships it in. Then you're forced to go all in uh, on a flip when you don't want to. Uh, so that's why you see them just rip it in to kind of shut out their opponents instead. Yeah, makes sense. I wouldn't have minded a three bet, but I can absolutely get behind that reasoning. Julian will pick up one with his pocket tens. It's a fun dynamic now, down to five. This is what I love about casting these final tables with you. Is like every single week there is a completely different dynamic. I can't remember the last time we saw this one where you have basically four guys that are all short, and then one guy is like, "What's up, dudes? Got 13 million? You know, he's got like 70 percent of the chips that are currently in play. That's ridiculous." 
It's also uh, cool, too, because actually the shorter, usually it's one of the really big names at the top, right? Just like running it over to everyone. Uh, but it's actually the big names are in the shorter stacks. And it's interesting to see how they approach uh, this situation because usually, you know, you expect them all to fold to them, but we'll see if they kind of fight back a little bit here and there. Julian Stewart, ace three suited. Jam it. There we go. Yes. Yeah, I love it. Because you know that this guy is going to limp and he's going to raise with a lot of hard garbage. And you don't love it. Obviously, you're praying for the fold, but I do think that's the correct play. And just the thing, you can see these uh, strong players, there's, they're fighting back against the chip leader uh, in the spots where they, they know they have very strong fold equity, the high equity situations. Um, Alexei is going to see a flop here. And, you know, the king jack is feeling good. You just check call, keep it small. See what he decides to do on the turn. I think just another check is totally fine. I do think that Xing Yong knows that once he gets called on this flop, ooh. I think it's going to mm. pay off here. Yeah, Alexa should be betting, I don't know, half to two thirds pot, something like this makes a lot of sense. Just aiming those ace high calls. Yeah, you don't want to let those ace highs get away. Um, there's a lot of draws, <laughs> to be honest. Like, it's hard to fold ace high here. It would be an amazing fold, but like, all the straight draws, all the flush draws. Um, let's see if Shing Yun can do it. I mean, it looks, yeah, nice fold. I think Alexa got a little greedy with that bet. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think if you bet 200, 220, maybe even 240, I do think you get looked up by the ace high. But yeah, going for the 360 or whatever it was, I think it's a little greedy. Trangela ace three also. He's thinking about a little sneaky three bet, I feel like. A lot of guys like to do this ace rag nowadays in front of the blinds. Um, doesn't play that good anyways. Oh, he's just going to fold. Okay. That's a, that's a, a very tight fold there with ace three just folding it outright. Um, mainly because of the, the situation. You can see the, the big name players like, sure they play for the win, but to be honest, they understand I him the most. I mean, the price difference between fifth and second is massive, right? It's 148 or 300k. As King Deuce gets it all in from the small blind. I think Daniel knows that if he calls, there's a chance he's behind. But Queen Jack, you know, it does flop well, Nano. What would you do? I, I tell you, Divorce is the type of guy who might actually make this call. A lot of other guys, they would have just fold by now. Um, but Divorce, he... He plays high equity situations. He understands ICM, but uh, if he thinks this it's Petrangelo is going to shove a lot of worse hands, uh, that's very, very close. I think if he had a king queen, he's most definitely calling. King Jack, most definitely calling. Queen Jack, if you want it to call, you can feel it. Maybe no, no. It's what you always say. If it was, if it's close and it's suited, you call. But since it was Queen <laughs> Jack off suit, he decided to pull. Enough. He's definitely not folding Queen Jack suit. Yeah, that's the thing. If it's suited, it's a call. <laughs> Do you like the chip leader saying running cold despite having a fire symbol right next to him and having all of the chips? I think he's doing that to just irritate the, the, the rest of the table, hoping that they make a little misstep. Nick Petrangelo is opening up A6 suited as a chip leader has A10 off suit in the small blind and he just jams on him. I'm loving the way that he's playing. Of course, a lot of people say, like, ah, it's easy to play when you've got 12 million chips, but uh, he's still, uh, I just like it. Because when they when you do stuff like this, it doesn't even seem like you necessarily have a monster. And if you're Nick Petrangelo, you're just like, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> like, you feel like you're, you're getting owned, right? Like, because you yeah. know the guy's up to no good, but you still can't call because you know you're supposed to follow the ICM and all these things. And Because that was a big shove, right? That was like 35 big blind, but she knew knows his opponents. Are, I think Petrangelo even folds two nines there, you know, like uh, for, for that many big blinds. So, you know, you can make people feel really dumb, like uh, when, when you shove so big. Mm -hmm. Julian is raising king nine offsuit from the small blind. I wouldn't mind a call here from Alexei. Let's just kind of see if you can flop the world or not. Ooh, it's not the world yet, but it's pretty good. For 5 4 suited, this is qualifies the world. Um, okay. He's got, he's got all the draws, he's got position. This is a dream scenario. I guess the question is do you raise the flop? I think I just, 
just raise and just shut it out. Uh, what's the worst that can happen? For me, the world would have been if he had an open end there rather than a gut shot. Then it would have been the okay. world without a made hand. Very, very close, but he is going to ship this pot and looks like you got an announcement for us. Is that right? Yep. Wow. You can hear that? Okay. That's, uh, maybe I should turn down the volume. But yes, guys, <laughs> we have our final free roll of the night. Just head over to the GG Poker client. Take a look at the free roll section. Password for our final free roll is a millions. M-I-L-L-I-O-N-S. That is the way you can join it. Should be an announcement in the chat too, of course. If you are playing, we wish you all the luck. And perhaps we need to wish Daniel Devorah some luck here because ace, queen, under the gun, basically all in. And Lexi with pocket nines, what do we do here, Nana? I'm ripping it in. Uh, just think it's just a little too strong to, to fold this hand. Think of eights, you can think about it, but two nines against a uh, under the gun, five-handed. I don't know why he called, though. Yeah, but now we're getting it all in anyway, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's probably that's a pretty damn good flop for pocket nines. Daniel DeVores, his tournament life is on the line. He needs an ace or a queen. Turn is no good. Can he find that ace or queen on the river? He does not. It was paint. You know, I got really good at recognizing paint, by the way, when it comes to squeezing. Like, even <laughs> I just see, like, the little sword, or I see, like, the little... I was like, oh, it's a lady. And then I was like, you know, because I've been squeezing too many cards. Oh, oh my, my God. God. What? What? <laughs> okay. We are down to four as Daniel DeVores uh, is eliminated in fifth place. But we have three players with big hands here. My goodness. Ace-10 probably gets away. But I don't think that ace, ace is out. going anywhere. Yeah, Petrangelo will probably three-bet this. And Xing Yun might just rip it in with ace-queen. Um, unless he's very suspicious. But uh, we know Petrangelo, Petrangelo is out of line. He does get out of line, so I don't know. And Sheen, you didn't see him three, you know, potential three bet ace, four bet ace jack into him. Like it just seems like I can't, he can't fold the ace queen. No, nope. a big double up potentially because one ace is also dead for Alexei. Yep, uh, from Alexei. Yep. It's hard to make a Broadway straight because two two kings are gone. <laughs> yep, there we go. Yeah. Well, that's a snap call for Nick Petrangelo. Here we go. Ace Queen offsuit versus Pocket Kings for a 4.6 million chip pot. Deuce four? Nope. And the ace and an ace only. A two outer is what it needs to be for a chip leader. And that is not it. Nick Petrangelo with the big double up here and some extra, actually, because of the race of uh, Alexei Barkov. He is now second in chips with 4.6 million. And now we do have a clear short stack, and that is Julian Stewart. He uh, needs to get going real soon before it's too late. Yeah, um, I think it gets this raise. I'm defending the queen nine. Try to see a flop. Um, closing the action. Any piece, just go with it. Um, but this one is definitely not going to be it. But look, man, can't believe Petrangelo. Man, he's, he's just cruising. He's, he's playing really well, actually. I know the two kings is an easy hand to play in that stuff, <laughs> but I feel like... And the other hands, though, like he's he's just been some tricky spots, been doing pretty good, and he's clear second place, and he's got he's got the odds, you know, where people are saying like he's better than you know the third place guy and things like that before the final table started. So we'll see. Queen nine actually peeled here. I guess Julian Stewart's just like, look, I've seen this guy raise ten three off suit into me. Um, queen high has to be good. <laughs> I think it's really funny. You're like, Nick Petrangelo is playing good, you know, right after he gets the double up with the Kings against a screen. Like, come on, man. No, I think I could have done that one, but <laughs> I know what you mean. I do like the way that he's played tonight. Obviously, he's a world-class poker player, but I wasn't a fan of the Jacks. That's the one thing I will say. I mean, I'm a fishy, so it doesn't really matter what I think, but I feel like we should have three-bet the Jacks pre-flop. Yeah, um, but, you know, these guys, they're, they're very ICM aware and heavy. Um in this spot, I think you should go check, check. Julian Stewart's going to think the queen high is good enough to not have to bet. Unfortunately, it is not. Um, if we want to steal this, I feel like we have to go all in. Like betting 200k, I, I don't know what that's going to get done. Yeah, Julian's thinking how... I do think the queen high has a lot of showdown value. Um, he beats a lot of hands, actually. Jack highs, 10 highs, 9 highs, 8 highs um because of the action um yeah i think it's fine just sucks when you're like oh i could <laughs> yeah. 
Not much he can do, which means that Julian drops to 11 big blinds. And it really is go time for him soon. But maybe at this point, he's like, you know what? Because now everybody is looking at me to bust. I'm going to take my sweet time. And I'm willing to go all the way down to four big blinds if I have to. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine just being an annoying guy? You know, like, yeah. just... <laughs> okay, King 4, Alexa, I see. This is your, your man to pick to win and your guy you got some money on. You got, you got a solid bet on him. Uh, he's, he's been putting some pressure on, huh? King of four offsuit. I mean, it's hard to get very excited. That was a beautiful hand, of course, but it's hard to get very excited. 3.3 .3 million against 10. But if he gets one double up, then uh, I'm going to bring my StarCraft hype, okay? And I'm not a StarCraft hype caster. I'm the analyst, you know. I'm a, a caller commentator. I'm not doing the play-by-play -play stuff, but We'll, we'll get a little hype going if he gets a big double. We'll see how it goes. 8-6 <laughs> suited against 8-5 offsuit. Petrangelo's thinking about throwing in a raise. You know, last time we did, he got limp jammed on, but these stack sizes are very different. Petrangelo is just like, and I know you think you can get away with limping just because you limp jammed on me once, but I'm going to still put the pressure on. Uh, and... He's got, he does get called. He's, sometimes when you know you make these raises, you're like, oh man, this sucks. But uh, I think he can still win this one if he throws out a third pot at least. Mm -hmm. We do want to take this down. Ooh, that's very tiny. There are back doors for Alexei Barkov. <laughs> oh, oh, he calls. The call and he gets one of his back doors. I mean, he's still nowhere. But now it's harder, I think, for Nick Petrangelo to bet, right? It's pretty hard um, because your opponent has the king a lot here to limp call, to check call, to flop. You're not really thinking about the deuce. The seven, if he bets again, he's trying to target the seven, you know, like the eight, seven type hands. But then some of these sevens have backdoor flush draws. It's, it's a heroic bet if he does it. He might do it, but I'm telling you, it's, it's very dicey because uh, you don't know, really know mm -hmm. what to do. But um, it's an ace. Goes check check. So if it check checks on the river, we're gonna chop this one up. Kickers will I'm not actually play here. Send it. No? Oh yeah, you're right. Huh? Eight seven. <laughs> no, no. Why are you scaring me like that? I'm like, damn it! <laughs> did I mess up? And mess up again? Like. <laughs> oh, no, nah, he's got to bet this eight six, right? You just you can't show down eight high, float out <laughs> of position. <laughs> well, let's see. Alexei's taking his time, probably wondering how much he needs to bet. I think he thinks he can't bet too big. And I like the sizing um, because it doesn't make sense for him a really nice. strong man to, to bet too big here, especially when the ace comes. He played that hand very well, I think. I really like the way he played that hand. Uh, I think Alexei Barkov definitely has been getting the better of Nick Petrangelo in some of these uh, heads-up battles that those two have been having. I agree. Um, that's the thing. that's how I told you earlier. Once you see the backdoor draws, you cannot unsee them. So with that eight six suited, he was like, "Yeah, I've, I've flopped a good piece here. <laughs> flopped one card. He's like pretty good. It's a seven. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what he decides to do in this one with the king six suited. Obviously, he didn't really flop anything, but Xing Yung is defending four or five offsuit, and that bet will get it done too." Alexei really bringing the fighting spirit. I think this is the first time tonight he's at 4 million, or almost at 4 million. So maybe he is feeling a little bit of momentum at this point. And uh, despite the chip stack uh, differences, um, they, they actually have a lot of chips to play with both Alexei and Petrangelo, like 60 to 70 big blinds. So there's a lot of poker to be played. Um, Julian Stewart just trying to flop anything. This is a something... Uh, it's not a good yeah. piece, though, because if he wanted a club in his hand to go along with this, you know? Yeah. But he might call still. It's just so small of a bet. Yeah, but it's so ugly. Like, what are the good turn cards? The seven of spades? <laughs> I mean, I guess any king, any seven will do, but, uh, but the king of clubs. You don't is want the one. clubs. No, exactly. Oh, he Whoa. raises. Interesting. I guess this is basically a check rate. I'm just trying to take it down. Hopefully you don't have a piece. Oh. Uh, but yeah. Oh. I don't know if I like that play. I feel like you should still should have just check called. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Well done by Alexei. He was not intimidated at all. He's like, yeah, three clubs. I've got no club. I don't give a damn. I've got an ace. You know, you probably have one club. Let's just run it out. So Alexei gets even richer. Nick Petrangelo opens up with ace queen suited in a real spot. On the gun or cutoff? What are we going with when we're forehanded? Cutoff? Cut I should be cut off. Uh, cut off is too important of a position. Maybe the the one more the player it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Hijack on the gun. All right. I go with it. Goes check, check. Even though both players flopped a pair, I don't think there's a need for Alexei. Oh, well, Alexei does have a gut shot now, too, right? Yeah, but I think his hand is better off trying to get to showdown with. Um, it looks like he's still going to fire. And I uh, don't think he's going to think he's ahead on the river card, but I, I can't imagine him continuing firing if it breaks off. Do you think Petrangelo uh, would ever... Ooh, oh, two pair for Alexei. I mean, it is four to a straight, right? Every six makes a straight, but Ace Queen is still too good to fold here, right? Probably. Um, we'll see. I don't think Alexei is going to bet too big either. Well, I can't just think you're just going to be like, I checked this flop of Ace Queen, just pay him his money. He might have... Sometimes you're thinking my opponent has ace jack, ace ten. You're just like, oh, I just can't let him get away with this. I think Petrangelo is, is is like, does seem like his opponent's not bluffing on this board texture, especially with no flush draws out there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just look at your hand, and you're like, sigh, whatever, take my monies. I feel like those. Is, this is one of those spots. But uh, he's good and he's got good hand reading. It's hard to think of a hand that Barkov is bluffing with though. Just worst value bets do still come into play. Mm, yeah, maybe a worse ace. Who knows? But yeah, and which I think it's a crying call. It's it's on the line of a hero fold and a crying call. But I think we go for crying calls here. But let's see what Nick Petrangelo does. It is the crying call. Tissues are ready now. And I was like, <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> it makes you feel worse when you think about it and still call and still lose. Right? Like you're better off snap calling and losing than thinking about it and losing. King-9 might go for it here, and A7 could potentially call. I think so. Uh, I think for five big blinds, A7 is good enough, and uh, Julian Stewart's got one big blind left. He's going to need some serious help here. Runner, runner. We need a sp uh, straight. Oh, all right. We have a couple outs and checks. Julian needs a jack and a jack only. It is paint, but it's not a jack, and that means that we are down 2-3. Julian eliminated in fourth place. He walks away with $187,000. And Alexei definitely uh, on the hunt. As we have Nick Petrangelo with a real hand. And our chip leader, Xing Yun, also with a pretty decent hand. Yeah, so these three guys, um, they came into the final table. Top three stacks. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep, and they're correct. the top three guys remaining. Big payouts. Uh you can see the odds right under webcam of me uh, that they were at when this final table did start earlier today. Most money's on Petrangelo, and he's still in it. But uh, Xing Yun is he's got the muscle right now. Queen Jack barreling here, but Ace Jack will definitely be check calling. What do we make of the limp preflop from uh, Petrangelo? You're just hoping that uh, Xing Yun is going to raise it up, and then he can put in the, yeah. the, the three bet, I guess. Pretty much. Um, they're all playing a lot of stack. Uh, I guess he plans on limping a lot in small blind, so he wants to include some strong hands as well, like ace-jack. Otherwise, if he was playing a race-heavy strategy, it wouldn't make sense to limp ace-jack. So I guess he's planning on limping like four or five offsuits and, and things like this. Try to get some free flops in. Oh, no. oh my gosh! How did that card hit? Of all cards! That is insane that is up no one gets away from this right do you ever get away from this nano you don't get away from it i guess the question is what does xing yun bet that potentially gets petrangelo just to call just to rather call. than raise it up i i, I don't think there's yeah uh, well, xing yun might million? bet like one if xing yun bets one million he probably yeah. opponent would just call yeah uh -huh. i don't know man i think i'd still be greedy i think i get it all in oh he just snap calls so okay well done. I mean, that is the best case scenario for Nick Petrangelo, even though it's incredibly brutal. But this could have been so much worse. This really could have been it for him. He is our clear short stack at this point, though, with only 1.8 million left. 
This is around 25-ish big blinds. You ready to get StarCraft hype yet? Your guys got 6 million chips potentially going to heads <laughs> up. <laughs> and you got money on the line, like, and bragging rights. Like, this is, yeah. this should be, this should be StarCraft. The, the smile is coming, Nana. The smile <laughs> is coming, but when, when he needs to break 8 million, okay? If he gets above 8 million, then I will become a real believer. I have been too happy in the previous weeks, and my dreams have been scattered over and over again. So let's do you take remember? It easy. Do you remember the other day when uh, that guy, the Russian guy, had Malagno out chipped chip leader, and he just lost it so fast, and that was the craziest swings in two seconds. Oh, this is a good move by Nick Petrangelo. He sees a lot of money in the pot, and he doesn't believe any of these two guys, and he's correct. Even though if he would get called, he's behind, but he will not get called. That's a great play by Nick Petrangelo. Yeah, I will uh, remember that one for a long time. The 35 million against 7 million, whatever it was. My Russian fellow let me down. But I will also never forget Lena 900, who was uh, like uh, two <laughs> river cards away from winning the tournament twice. And twice he didn't end up winning it. Nick Petrangelo has Queen 10 suited again, of clubs again. He's like, well... This hand did great for me a few runs, uh, two runs ago. Yeah, so I will not celebrate anything yet, Nano. But I am oh, a believer. I'll tell you this: the Delina nine hundred was actually three times. Just to remind you. Thank you, Nano. <laughs> um, Queen ten suited. It's potential to see a flop. He has seen his opponent get out of line, playing thirty big blinds. Quite tempting to to see one here. It, it worked the previous time. Oh, and he oh, does it again. Mind. And now Nick Petrangelo needs a queen or a flush or a straight. Otherwise, he is in serious trouble. Okay, not the worst flop ever. But he still needs help. He needs a queen or a jack. Queen or a jack. And it's not good enough. And that means it is down 2-2. Two, two. Nick Petrangelo, a lot of people believed in him. Most amount of money went on him when it came to the final table betting. But he is eliminated in third place. It means we're heads up. Our chip leader. No chip. No, it's not possible to win it four weeks in a row. Now, Nanonoko, is it? <laughs> is this the third time you've got the guy heads up? One of the guys with money on the line? Mm -hmm. My gosh, like you're good at picking those second place winners. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that doesn't do Jack anything for me. Uh, let's see how this one plays out. Jack-5 putting on the pressure, but Barkov has a flush draw. Turns a pair, so that's nice too. It was funny though, because the Queen-10 suited last time. So what you were saying, like, you just, it just did him some good. Maybe he feels good with it. And it just, I thought he was going to lose a little bit of chips. He lost all of the chips in that last hand. Um, here we go. 7 dude suited going to win some chips, huh? That's a, that's a good start to a heads up. Nana, why are you saying that? There is still a river, and there are still two cards that could really help Ching Yun here, and two is more than most of my arch nemesis need to just absolutely drill it on the river. Yeah. Oh, that's a perfect uh, river card, to be honest. That's a perfect river card, because that's going to give Ching Yun the showdown value that might just check it back. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. Because if, if it came a blank... Alexei might have lost that pot potentially because mm -hmm. his opponent did do the overbet on the on the turn and they're now they're very close two to one, very close. <laughs> you are you are ridiculous, Nanonoko. <laughs> one guy's got thirteen million chips and the other guy's got six. My my pick couldn't win it with thirty five million against seven million. So don't you dare to say that they are very close. But we've got a heads up match on our hand and that is going to be fun. Of course, the winner walks around or walks away with $381,000. Second place gets $300,000. And let's see. Did we ever have a winner from Ireland? I don't think we did, right? I don't think so. Um, yeah, no, I do not. I'm sorry. I, I like, I feel like this heads up battle, it could easily be very long because if you think about it, it's 100 big blinds for Barkov. Mm -hmm. And Ching Yun's obviously got more than that. That that's a lot for a heads up match. But these guys have already shown signs of overbetting um, within the first five hands, so it could also get really quick. Uh, very, you know, depending on what kind of hands happen. 
Uh, Xing Yun's got two nines on this board. He's got the best hand, but you don't want to see the two over cards. So checking makes a lot of sense. Try to pick off a little bluff to try to get the showdown. He might check one more time, but he might bet this turn. Um, I think betting is pretty good. Yeah. I think I like betting with hands like nines where you don't really like the flop, but it went check, check, and then they check to you again on the turn. That's when I often feel oh. pretty good. Two pair for Alexei Barkov. All right. It's not a massive okay. pot yet, Nano, but he's chipping up. We're StarCraft hype now. This is this is 8 million <laughs> chips incoming. No, they check, check. It's only 7.4. <laughs> You gotta get extra that. excited, man. Okay, so tell me, tell me about your bet. How much did you put down, or or how, what are you gonna if win, I, or whatever? If I recall correctly, I will double check. But I think I bet fifty bucks. Okay, for some That's reason, I, des I decided to bet forty-seven dollars, and potential winnings <laughs> is three hundred and fourteen. I bet fifty on uh, Anatoly Filatov, so that was actually my biggest bet. Alexei Barkov was yeah you know, forty-seven dollars to win three hundred and fourteen. Is the account bust though? You only have forty-seven dollars left. You couldn't put it no, back. I, I think I rounded it up. I said I'll do a total of one hundred twenty-five dollars. <laughs> I think in uh, final table betting. So that's yeah, I gotta set some <laughs> limits. But we're we're getting there, Nano. I mean, I'm never winning a bet. So yes, eventually we will go bust. <laughs> one week, you guys are gonna see me really stressed. It's like, man, Roddy really <laughs> lost this random Russian dude. It's like, yeah, guys, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no okay that's a so bad river card um this is actually checked down to the river uh so no bets that could have got Xing Yun off his hand but now he's gonna go for some value don't think ace queen should be paying off given the way that the hands played it just seems a little bit bizarre oh, wow he is gonna pay off okay these guys are just gonna fire it out you know what i don't know what's going on but it's gonna be a fast heads up even though we're deep oh, that was like eight big lines right on the river mm-hmm well, not eight, four. No, four, yeah. <laughs> sort of. Hey, small blinds. You play in yeah. small blinds, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, this one is looking mighty fine for Alexei Barkov. Something very weird has to happen for him to lose this one. going to need some runner runner magic. Well, <laughs> a queen on the river would be lovely, Nananaka. Wouldn't that just bring all the fireworks? <laughs> Yeah, um, I think Alexei should be betting here. Um, no reason to trap because your opponent, they don't really go for a bet check bet line on this board texture, the top card pairing. Uh, you just got to bet in a way to, okay, over bet, hoping your <laughs> opponent just hero calls you. Yeah, a little, a little greedy there. but Yeah, it wasn't happening anyways. I just want to see Alexei get to 8 million chips. That, that's all I asked for. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make it ultra biased either because imagine there's a lot of viewers probably watching that did put money on the chip leader. <laughs> They're like, hey, this guy won three out of three weeks and those guys are going to get super tilted by me. So we'll keep it somewhat neutral. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. I, I'll be on Xing Yun's side. Don't worry. I can balance it out for you. Two pair. Uh, Barkov's been hitting these random two pairs a lot, yep. huh? Yep. Oh, man. That is absolutely a trend throughout the evening. This is like the third or fourth time already that he gets a super random two pair on the river. And if he doesn't get super greedy, he may get paid off. But I think this qualifies as pretty super greedy. So It's pretty greedy. Um, Xin Yun, though, he, he's, he's also kind of a little bit confused. Oh, he, does he makes pay the it call. Off. All right. Barkov chips up to 8.6 million. Nana, Noko, we've got a heads up match on our hands. Let me just tell you guys, it's virtually impossible for the man who comes in as chip leader to win four weeks in a row at the high, high roll of Super Millions. So may, maybe Roddy will finally pick his second winner in 28 weeks. Who knows? <laughs> Both would be Russian players too, right? Like you love these Russian regs and they're, they're pretty good. They're, they're crazy too. Um, Xing Yun, oh, he's still got the chip lead. There's, as you can see under my webcam, right, $10,000 in bets on Xing Yun, about $9,000 in bets on Alexei. Um, so, you know, this is a proper match going on uh, behind the scenes as well, and not just on mm -hmm. felt. And the final table betting will only get bigger and bigger. Like, I'm just waiting for the week where we have multiple, like, poker superstars at the final table. Imagine a lineup with, like, Isaac Haxton, Daniel DeVores, Lena 900, Limitless uh european like that would 
the final table betting would explode. I think. I think everyone would just get mad. That would be so fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm liking the way these guys are playing so far. Uh, this right now is about about eighty thousand dollar heads up match between the two guys, so it's a pretty big one. Uh, looks like Alexei is going to bet, and the king three coming along. But the clubs—that's the card. <laughs> you want to see, right? like, that's a <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I still don't like Xing Yong. And definitely doesn't strike me as a folder. I don't know if he's folding here. I mean, it is a very. He basically has no kick, and he does fold. So Alexei wins another one. To 8.6 million chippies. Mm -hmm. That was a fun evening so far. I definitely enjoyed this episode, Nananoka. You could enjoy it more depending on what happens. I mean, Absolutely. like this is this is a very nice uh, situation. You know, it could be a quick one, it could be a long one, who knows? But you're invested. Uh we've we've got over 200 big blinds in play between the two mm -hmm. players, so. And they just keep, Let me just they tell just keep you, firing. Yeah, what do you want to tell me? You're happy? All the, uh, all the one, two Omaha players out there, they should cheer for Alexei Barkov because they know if Roddy has a couple extra dollars in his bank account, that that's good for all of them because I, I will get into those Omaha streets. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. You heard it. The, like the second, um, you know, if your guy wins it, like the tables are just filling up waiting for you to show up. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even want to know how many people have me labeled as fish, but I promise you it's a lot. <laughs> All right. Queen seven of diamonds against six five of hearts. Six five of hearts does have a backdoor flush draw and bottom pair. Makes the call. And there's the heart. I mean, if we're calling on the flop, we're probably calling on the turn, right? If Xin Yun does decide to bet. <laughs> even if, yeah, even if Xin Yun bets two million chips, he's still calling here. Um, is going to be able to show down the six pretty well, I believe. I don't think Xin Yun's going to fire. Just, I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, he'd be targeting a jack a lot. I guess the question is, does he think a jack or six would fold? In? He is going to fire. Wow, this might work. Yep. This is a very smooth bet. Yeah. That is a good bet. Unless they may put him on like some of the, the King Tens, though. You know, that kind of a hand. He'd probably fire, too. Could obviously have I mean, showdown value. Yeah, with a king ten, you're pretty good showdown value. I think. Barkov is thinking. I guess Barkov's thinking. Did you really check an ace back on the turn? Wow, oh, that's an amazing call. call. He makes the call. Does not believe it. Wins a 1.7 million chip pot, and for the first time tonight, Alexei Barkov breaks the 9 million chip barrier, and he definitely has momentum on his side. We know how things. Uh, how quickly things can swing in heads up. Man, this is, he's, he's playing great. Like, and heads up is his forte. You know, like this guy is just picking off flops here and there, making some moves. And maybe he put, fires another barrel of his inside straight draw, puts his opponent on like a weak pair or like a king high. Well, actually, Xing Yun will be taking the betting lead. But Barkov, uh, he strikes with a guy who might make a little move here or maybe call and see a, see a river card. I think we can call. Like a 10 could be good. An 8 is obviously fantastic, even if it's not the nuts. But wow. Okay. Oh, my nice. God. And he, he just gets him to fold. What a move by Alexei Barkov. Okay, he's playing really well. He's our new chip leader, Nano Noko. We've got a new chip leader. And I can't believe I would even say that because earlier, Xing Yun had the entire table out chip 2-2-1. And uh, you got to remember, I just recall that there's the hand earlier, ace, king versus two aces, was actually between these two guys. These guys have actually been battling for a bit throughout these final table. Um, had a lot of hands against each other. And it, it were dead even. Let's see what Xing Yun decides to do here with his bottom pair and no kicker. Makes the call. Six of hearts. Interesting turn card. I think Barkov, if he had a heart, would consider barreling. Without the heart, it's quite hard to do so. Jack five, I still think it's good enough to probably just check and try a showdown. I don't know if you need to turn this hand into a bluff. I guess the reason is a king doesn't always bet the flop, and he is going to try to turn his hand into a bluff. Um, but I'm not too sure if it was necessary. Uh, Barkov's thinking about making a move. This is a perfect board to make a move, though, right? Like, you've got squatters. <laughs> You're not blocking anything, but who really gives it there? I mean, I guess you 
have one of the uh, Broadway straight cards, but who gives it them? No hearts in his hand, but no hearts in the hand of Xing Yun neither. Can Barkov do it again? He really wants to. You can feel it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think he's thinking his opponent doesn't have a king of hearts too often. I mean, it is actually very possible his opponent has the king high flush draw. Hmm. I, yeah, I wouldn't have liked it too because it's hard for Alexei to have a king of hearts. But who knows? We're on a break and we're close in chips. We are very close in chips. I mean, Xing Yun is back to being our chip leader tonight. The man who's rocking the Israel Adesanya avatar. But uh, here we go. I guess the graphic was made one hand before that final one. Uh, but yeah, guys, we've got four minutes and 40 seconds before we will most likely wrap up the 28th edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Definitely one of my favorite episodes. I don't want to get too carried away and be like, it's the best episode ever. But this has been a damn good one. I know Nano has been having a lot of fun. I've been having a great time and hopefully you guys do. And if you guys participated in our free rolls, hopefully you're doing well. Make sure to follow GG Poker on Twitter. It is no longer GG Poker official on Twitter. It's just GG Poker now. So we're making moves in the world of Twitter where they will run the guest the winning hand Twitter contest each and every single week. Today, the jackpot was $1,000. I participated, King Jack Offset, King of Clubs, Jack of Hearts, I believe it was. I just like to participate for fun. But yeah, we'll see you guys in a couple minutes and then we will continue our coverage. Stay tuned and see you soon.
All right, guys. Rod is back. Nano is back. And in 10 seconds, we will continue the heads up battle between Alexei Barkov and Xing Yun 888. We didn't mention that once. Anybody's game at this point. I mean, we're playing, we're so deep, right? We're over 100 big lines deep. That's crazy. This could be an epic heads up battle, but I, I still feel it could explode at any given moment because these guys have been pretty wild. Yeah, definitely. They, they're playing big pots. They're making big call downs with just a pair of fives and things like this. And uh, again, uh, we've got some, some pretty weak hands, but with some chips flying in already. Looking very good for Alexei Barkov. This is a big bet, though, but I mean, with a pair and a gut shot, I think we call. I think we call too, especially with uh, backdoor draws where people are definitely multi barreling here. I don't think he thinks the deuce is good that often. It is occasionally against like a king, 10 of hearts, or something like this. Uh, but I think Xin Yun probably really feels like he wants to, to fire again. I don't know. But he's been hero called already. He is going to fire again. This is a really sick bet. I don't know if 7-5 can make this call. Yeah. Um, but uh, but Parkov is good at hand reading, as we can see. And he's thinking, are you really betting again when the straight, obvious straight gets there? It's a weird straight, the three, right? But uh, he might think his some of the value bets don't happen as much. This would be an epic call. Like I'd be so damn impressed if he makes this call. I don't see how you call, but Alexei Barkov has surprised us before. I mean, this is third pair of tilt. Oh, oh he makes nice. the call! What a call, <laughs> man. He is so good. Oh, my goodness. Nana no call. Is this a star in the making, or what are we witnessing tonight? He is playing okay. next level good. You picked a good Russian player today. Um, I think he can start to semi-celebrate soon, because right now, like... No, uh, no, 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 no. Stop like it, gotta... Nana no <laughs> No, but he's playing phenomenal in this heads up match so far. Um, and this has just begun. Uh, he's, he's wow, there's some, some great call downs so far. And uh, I think Shane Yoon is thinking, man, I'm making some good bluffs, but how do you keep picking me off? Yeah. This one will go Barkov's way as well, as he made one pair with his eight deuce offsuit. It's not just the fact that he's been winning a lot of chips, but he's been really having to work with it. And he's been right in all these tough spots. So all the momentum is definitely on his side. Not just because he's winning, but he's winning while playing great. And that feels, it almost feels like it counts double, you know? Mm -hmm. Most certainly agree. And actually the chip stacks has uh, flip-flopped a bit, right? Because at one point, mm -hmm. Shin Yun had the 12 million in this situation. Ooh. Pretty, I have a pretty decent flop for Barkov, I'd say. That qualifies as... Uh, not the world yet. Now maybe you could say it's the world as he makes the 10 high flush. I think we just check and hope that Xing Yun takes a step uh, at it. I think, I think we bet. And the reason is I think my opponent has a king and a jack. Some kind of showdown value hand. I, wow. uh, I don't know about an over bet. But, uh, you know, like, <laughs> Alexei's got his, uh, he's got his style because you can see, like, he wants to put the pressure on. Um, he knows his opponent's hands range is capped. Maybe he'll call down more, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Yeah, what a uh, performance so far by our Russian player. But obviously he's not there yet. Poker can be a brutal game. Xing Yun makes bottom pair here. So takes the lead in this spot. And has a backdoor flush throw. Will definitely stick around. Thinking about putting in a raise, it looks like. You can, you can feel it. There is the check raise. Try to shut it down. Barkov lets it go immediately. Squadouche, no good there. This is always kind of exciting because, like, on one hand, you're like, ah, you know, they're so deep, nothing weird is going to happen. Like, the other look hand, at these guys, guys, though. Yeah. I'll tell you, though, if a four rolls off, Xing Yun's going to win a ton of chips, especially with the dynamics so far, right? Mm -hmm. um, a four or nine of spades, we may just get it all in. <laughs> a, a four would definitely be worse because no overcard would come, but that is a dicey card. It's, it's interesting because. Xing Yun might not bet potentially. He did pick up a flush draw, but the seven is obviously annoying because his opponent could have a seven pretty easily. I think we bet. You want to get some chips in there. Well, <laughs> he did not bet, and now Alexei is going to feel very good about uh, the third nuts, I guess. It, no, actually, every overpair would be the nuts, but he still has a very good hand on this board. 
yeah, definitely going to go for some value, trying to get paid off. And there we go. Keeps chipping up. It's another decent one heading his way. King 10 offsuit is going to duke it out with King 4 offsuit. King 10 offsuit is one of these hands where full ring, you're like, eh. But heads up, you're like, oh, pretty good. Let's get some chips in. King high does make the call. And does the nuts on the turn for Alexei Barkov. Don't go greedy, mate. Like, keep it small. There's no need to bet 800k now. That'd be well, silly. He's not going to win any more chips anyway, so it's pretty darn hard to. Okay, he definitely is getting a little greedy in some spot. I think if he bets very small here, you never know. Maybe your opponent feels like check raising you because they mm. want to get out of line with their gut shot. But like that is a bit silly to me to bet one million there. Well, he's got two to one chip lead right now, and he's looks like he wants to three bet this nine do suit and just keep this pressure on. I don't. It's, I'm getting these vibes. The three bets coming. There it is. <laughs> 5-4 suited is kind of a pretty hand to see a flop with. And he oh. calls immediately, makes bottom pair, but Alexei Barkov picks up the flush draw. There are certain cards that will end this tournament or get a full double for his opponents, you know? Like the, the two of pair, or, yep, four spades, five of spades. Um, both pick up a draw. Mm-hmm. I think Alexei is, should still keep betting. He's got a good hand, a good draw. He's got nine high. His opponent could have a hand that's going to fold. Like 5-4 here, might have to just fold to the turn bet. It's not a clean straight draw. 1.4 million. I think that is enough to get Xing Yong to fold. Let's see what he decides to do. These are mm -hmm. gnarly spots, right, with bottom pair. That's, yeah. I can understand the fold. Yeah, it's, it's just too tough. But look at this. Now you're feeling good. Can we say it's <laughs> closed out? It's a three to one chip lead. Alexa, you did pick him to win it. You do have some money on him, can win over $300 or something like that. And mm -hmm. the blinds are up. I think you should be feeling really good this time. You can't I am lose feeling it four times. Yeah, I am feeling really good, but that's not just because he now has a three to one chip lead. It's just because he's been playing beyond amazing. And that is a unfortunate turn card, which does mean that Xing Yun will take the lead. Unfortunate if you put some money on Barkov like I did, and I believe like 85 other people did. The board pairs on the river. I mean, you got to think that your eight is good here quite often, but we know it's not. Someone's value betting, and it looks like it's going to be Barkov. See, now, now you start the speech about how great I should be feeling, and bam, 1.1 <laughs> million chips go into Xing Yun's way. Okay, then you get two aces. <laughs> oh, top pair. Aces versus be a, top pair. This is a multi-million chip pot coming out, for sure. Because I don't see Xing Yun folding, and Barkov's been doing over bets over and over again. Yeah. So he might just throw another overbet right here, like a million like this chip. Is where I, this is where I would not mind an overbet, for instance. Like, I think that's pretty good. You know, if you feel that your opponent could have a jack or maybe has a strong drawing hand, like this is where I wouldn't mind it too much. When we have the stone cold nuts as the board pass, I think that's bad news for Shing Yun, right? You got to feel that your jack is good here. Very bad, especially you've been losing a lot of pots. You feel like you want to make a stance. Um... 2.5 million chips coming in from Barkov, possibly. That's that's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Asus, what does Barkov decide to do here? He does bet 2.5 million. And I cannot imagine that we're folding the jack here. If you're on team Xing Yun. If you're wrong, he makes the call. Alexei Barkov wins 7.3 million chips. And takes a monster. Starcraft lead. hype coming. Is Starcraft no. hype coming? There's no way we're now, right? 23 <laughs> million. Oh. You know what, Nano? Go ahead and congratulate me. I, we've done it, guys. <laughs> Steam Barkov. I, I just checked, but I believe it's 84 people that put some money on Barkov with pocket fours. Is there a better way to win it than flopping a set with pocket fours against Ace Eight? Here we go. <laughs> Pocket fours always go. make a set. I've been saying it for so many episodes. Well, oh, they need to make a set worse. now on the river. 
<laughs> they do not. So Ace 8 will get the double up. And we're back to normal. 15 million against 4 million. <laughs> That was close. That was two hands from it being all over. I was I was gonna say this is scripted, right? Because like the two fours, if it hit a set on that flop, that would just be like your day just perfectly gift wrapped <laughs> for you. Instead, we have King Six duking it out with Ace Ten. King Six obviously in the lead. Wouldn't mind a bet here, and we are betting pretty big. Ace Ten, it's best hand a lot, but no diamond and. Uh... Barkov's got to check this hand. I think Shin Yu needs to turn his hand into a bluff on this one. Um, yeah. I, what do you beat? You don't beat anything. You got to throw out some chips here. 700K, I think it's a good bet. There it is. Wow. Nice. Okay. This time, Barkov makes the incorrect fault. That has not happened very often. Well done there by Shin Yu. Picks up a pretty decent pot. So 74 people bet on Alexei Barkov and only 34 people bet on the man who came in as chip leader tonight, Xing Yun. It's, it's but, been an amazing evening for him regardless, Nano. He had $133,000 in winnings over at GG Poker before this final table started. He has now already won $300,000. So it's pretty damn I was going to say, he, only 34 people bet on him, but his bets are more than a Barkov's total bets on, you know? Like, yeah. those those are high rollers betting on Xing Yun, you know? Like, the Barkov betters are the guys, that, I've got $20 left in my account, let me throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the odds obviously come into play there, right? If you want to win something properly on Xing Yun, you have to bet a little more because the odds are only 3.8, I think. Yeah, yeah. 3.75, 3.8. Well, for Barkov, you had a much better payout, 6.8. So it makes, makes sense. What do we do here with 10-8 offsuit? I'm throwing some chips out. Why not? Nope. Never mind. Save some chips. <laughs> <laughs> Xing Yun turns stuff there. Bet. That makes it easy for Alexei Barkov. Really didn't have anything going there. Pocket sevens. Do we raise the sevens? Yeah, I think sevens is, is good enough for sure to, to try to get a lot of value. Xing Yun hasn't really been limping too with this stack depth, so I expect a lot of folds. Man, I'm feeling so nervous. <laughs> it's like, I'm not sure what, I, I'm not even so nervous about my final table betting. Like I do that for fun. But so you can finally stop making fun of me for only picking one winner in 28 weeks. That is a little more important. I doubled down tonight. I didn't spread out the winners. No, we went all for it. All Alexei Barkov and he has played a phenomenal final table. But it's far from over, man. We have seen this flip so many times, right? Like when it was like 17 against 2 million, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's hard, but you get the first double up, you pick up a little pot here and there, and all of a sudden, like we're one double up away from this being a dead even match. I'm wow, six big line raise here. Trying to punish that limp in it works because that's a huge raise. It's hard to do anything with the ace three. Um, I do want to say, I think you figured it out, right? Because remember, I kept on asking you the previous final tables of the final table. Why aren't you picking the guy to win the guy you bet money on, right? And it makes sense. It's, it's, you had to combine it together because, you know, you want the full package when you do ship it. Um, it, it you figured it out finally, Roddy. <laughs> well, let's see if I truly have it figured out or not. Because we still have a lot of poker to play, potentially. I mean, there's still 44 big blinds. For Xing Yun, technically, there's no reason for him to get very nervous. He could still just play his game. And let's say makes the call here with bottom pair, and he is still good, but a lot of very, very bad river cards. Every eight, nine, queen, ten. It's going to be hard to, for the trees to hold up. I think you bet here, right, with queen eight. Well, he doesn't. Now I feel a little better about my pair of trees. If I was Alexei Barkov, I'd be like, well, there's a good chance that my uh, baby full house is good. Yeah, I agree. Um, try to get picked off, paid off by some ace high type hands. Xing Yun here, queen eight is going to lay it down. And it is pretty damn hard to lose for Barkov right now. I know, yeah, he got his opponent got one double up, but man, chip stacks are looking good. Ace jack. 
three bet it up. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't go too big, I think Queen Eight could call, but that's pretty decent sizing to say the least. Yeah. Okay, he's Queen still Eight still call. calls. Hmm. He's like, okay, let me let you back into this heads up matching here. Let me give you an extra five or six hundred thousand chips. Um, it's gonna be a firing out. I mean, calling here is never an option, but you can, with no back push. doors, you know you can't continue. You need the back door heart. Once in a blue moon, we see people just all inning there, feeling that they could specifically target the ace high hands. That'd be a crazy move. So good news for Xing Yun, as he is back to five million chips now. He's going to be forced to fold this one. I'm going to take a look at some of the stats of uh, Alexei Barkov. He did make it to a final table before. Back then, uh, he was playing on the DID Joker face. Yeah, he had an early exit. That was one of the bigger ones we had, though. So he had a massive payout for just making the final table. We had 195 entries this week, as you guys can see on the bottom side of our screen. I like our special editions. They, uh, they often provide some the biggest names in poker to sign up and that makes it extra cool not only that but i feel like we always get some crazy hands in the in the special editions um i really remember the the connor dry name versus the guy from kazakhstan that was like the craziest one of the craziest heads up matches we've ever seen it was like the biggest prize too um so like it's it's always been real fun and next is gonna bump it up with ace jack 10 to suit it with the snap call makes bottom pair and has the backdoor heart still alive probably just call here right with 10 deuce no need to get probably crazy. but we have seen him check raise a, a similar bottom pair uh, before i like to check call though we got the backdoor heart hmm. let's say barkov will check it back now, if he bets big on the river he could get xing yung to fold but it would be a weird line right yeah, it'd be pretty insane. Like, okay, <laughs> like Barkov checking back a queen on the turn almost yeah. never. Yeah, just sometimes uh, you got to know where, where your ranges are. <laughs> Nine's just limping. Queen six just uh, checking it down. Or at least checking preflop. Now we have a pair of sixes for Alexei, but nine's still in the lead. Definitely going for another bet here of two nines, I think. Um... Yeah, I just got to keep betting. Charge those hands. He's crawling back though, Nananoka. He's crawling back. Betting 330k. Let's see what Alexei decides to do. Oh, oh think of well. six. Yeah, he decides to make trip sixes on the river. That's pretty good. I think he might just lead out. Check. No, ch check. Let him bet one more time. <laughs> I do think leading out is good, though. The reason is, I think his opponent will check back a lot of hands, just being a little bit worried about the six. Uh, and you kind of force your opponent to kind of side call of hands like this. Mm -hmm. uh, two nines, you know? And two nines blocks a straight. It blocks... Uh, I mean, he's got... He can pick off flush draws. Um, he blocks some... You know, he beats some 8x type hands that might play this way. Yeah. I don't think he's ever folding. I have the feeling that he may think of raising. Which is very unnecessary, but these guys have been a little crazy with each other. But I do not believe he's ever falling. I th yeah, I don't think he's raising. It'd just be bizarre. You just beat yeah. way too much. You, you know, 10 would not play oh, their wow. hands. That's a, That's a good fold. fold. That is a very good fold. I actually, uh, I mean, obviously a raise wouldn't really have made a lot of sense, but you know, these heads up, I always feel like there's a little bit of mind games going on and a little bit of an extra dynamic, but Excellent fold there by Xing Yun, who really has been playing pretty damn good too. Alexei flops top area with his jack seven. Xing Yun has back doors. <laughs> yeah, the thing is he cannot unsee it, so he really wants to make a play, and he does. That's the thing. Once you see the back doors, they cannot be unseen. But obviously, Alexei is willing to put in a good amount of chips here with the top pair. I love this. Like. I do find calling here, it's obviously the bare minimum, but it's a bit scary, right? Because then if your opponent bets very big into you in the turn, there aren't that many cards that are great for you. He does just decide to make the call 
1.8 million in the middle, Nanonoko. This could be a crazy hand. Yeah, um, I think uh, Barkov should bet. If he was up against a three, he doesn't have many outs anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I would mm -hmm. bet and charge those. A lot of hands that would check raises flop and check the turn are the five, six, four, five, those type of hands. They've got outs against you. And uh, oh, oh my. how wait, how did he win this pot with 10 5? Well, he did. Alexei is now wondering. I do think we're going to check it back though, right? Yeah, that's the safest thing to do. And Alexei will receive the bad news that that five on the river was deadly for him. And that's a big one. Xing Yung chips his way up again to 6.5 oh. million. And we do have aces for Alexei Barkov. I, yeah, obviously no action here. But I was going to say, do you you watched the Queen's Gambit, right? What was the yes. guy, the villain? Was he he's similar to Barkov, also from Russia? I I can't yeah, remember yeah. the name. Yeah, what I, was his name? Gosh. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up for you. He was from Russia too, right? Yes. Because this is the okay. vibe I'm getting. Like, this is strong player Barkov fighting the hero Xing Yun right now, who was a chip leader. Was it? it's, so, it's, such, it's very close, the name I feel like. I can't remember what it was. I yeah, you, 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 you have to look it up now that I said it, huh, Roddy? Like, you just can't, you just can't unhear it. Damn it. You got to cover Roddy, the action for me. <laughs> no, there's nothing happening. Don't worry. We would, this is more important. We want to know this character name into the Queen's Gambit. <laughs> no, they got some garbage hands right now. Um, raise and takes. But blinds are up, just to let you know. Oh, Borgov. It's Borgov. Borgov. That's yeah. so close to Barkov. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're correct. Vasily Borkov. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, though, do you, you know the end of the movie? Who wins? I don't yeah, think I Borkov I've, wins. So Borkov, Barkov might not win. You just spoiled it, by the way, for so many people now. <laughs> a lot of people don't have time to watch these Netflix shows. How can you just do that? Like, if the show is two years old, I'll be like, okay, you can say that. Nanonoka, that shows me not for like two months. You can't be doing those things. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, two aces and two kings. That is ridiculous. In heads up, final table, race, three bet, four, just a call. They're still going to lose stacks. The stacks yeah. are going in no matter what anyway. The stacks are too shallow. Oh, my God. Running clubs is not an option because there's the ace of clubs still. Xing Yun bets on the flop. Nine of diamonds doesn't really change anything. Barkov needs in the king and a king only. Do you think he ever checks here? He's still gonna, he doesn't think he's behind. Keep that in mind, okay? If he checks, he's trying to trap. He's not checking because he thinks he's behind. Um, he's still going to be able to value shove the river very cleanly, too, with two kings. Uh, wow, what a setup. What a setup. Yeah. Even this card, I think he still shoves. Uh, it just seems so unlikely the two kings are behind here. Your opponent could have two queens, could have two tens. You could even have like a ace nine type hand that three bet and check call to the turn. This opponent you would probably it. keep barely out a flush draw. Yeah, you block the flushes. I just don't see the two kings not going for it. There we go. Kings go all in and they get snapped by the aces. And Xing Yun is back in the lead with 11.4 million. Against the 8 million of Barkov. No, 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 Cal. You've done it again. <laughs> you sick individual. <laughs> and now Xing Yun just flops strip hates. <laughs> Wait, I'm so cursed. It's unbelievable. It's yeah, not quads. over. <laughs> wow. It's it was almost perfect. Way. It was like perfect timing. I was asking who the character is. <laughs> Queen's Gambit. I spoil it. And then like... <laughs> I was like, who wins the final match? And things had just started to turn around immediately after. But it's it's obviously not over. They have a lot of chips to play for. 
Um, but we got to remind you, Xing Yun had 2 million chips at one point. Now he's got 12 million. Yeah. Oh, I remember Nanonoko. I've been here before. And to all my other betters out there that put some money on Barkov, I will go with the meme. It's like, oh, it's your first time? <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that meme. It's good. All right, let's talk some poker. Barkov does pick this one up with King 8 offset. And it's still a ridiculous amount of big blinds to play for. And he has been playing great throughout this entire final table. Could win a big one here. Ace Jack suited versus Ace Four offsuit. Can obviously lose a lot of chips too. There's the three bet. Obviously, a very swingy heads up match so far. You know, it could be a lengthy one. Like I said earlier, we do have a lot of big blinds to play for. Remember, at one point, they each had 100 big blinds in this heads up match. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and yeah, it's swingy. That, that Kings and Aces hand is this ultimate cooler, though. And not only yeah. that, they had a lot of chips to play for, so it's even worse. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yep. This is not good for Barkov. But maybe he could turn it into something. Even though this board is maybe the kind of board that scares you when uh, you are the one who's free betting free flop. Goes check, check. King, Queen still in the lead. Let's see if Barkov decides to fire on the turn. He does not. Xing Yu may feel like he needs to bluff to take this one down, but he really doesn't. Yeah. I, I like it. I mean, it sucks for Barkov because he's thinking, I really just can't bet this turn because then I'm representing a five, but it's a three bet pot, so it's so hard yeah. to represent it. Uh, and, and that just gave the white flag. I can't believe it. Two to one chip lead for Xing Yu. <laughs> <laughs> King six suited will take this one down. I mean, the pot's obviously now getting bigger. The blinds will go up again in 16 hands. We're currently at level 35. Could get pretty quick. And I do feel that Barkov probably steaming a little bit now. Like, come on. You're at 2 million. They were flipping, by the way, right? Was pocket fours against ace eight offset? Correct. So they, yeah. Ace on the turn. It's what started this comeback for the man who's repping Israel Adesanya. Oh, what a flop. The Just Royal check it. Let us see flop. it. Let <laughs> us see the turn card. Come on. Oh. Rabbit hunt? Nah. <laughs> I think he might actually. I think he had the option. Or maybe uh, I think you only have the option if you're the one being put to the test. I recall that correctly. Sometimes, like I used to do it all the time, and lately I've let it go because the rabbit hunts they do get to me every now and then. Like, I don't <laughs> want to know if I had a difficult decision. I was like, I just don't want to know. <laughs> Seven five versus six nine. No clubs on board. Barkov probably feels that uh, if he wants to win this one, he needs to make some magic happen. Don't think seven five six around. Oh, Barkov kind of getting back in the winning column. I think at this point, Nanonoko, there is only one goal for Barkov, and that is get rid of the ice cube. The ice cube is it's, it's bad vibes. That's bad karma. You want to get rid of the ice cube, and then you can play your A game again. Eighty two percent too, right? Like um, <laughs> it's a very cold ice cube. Xingyun with King Queen suited again of spades makes the call. Does not improve, but the ace is a scary river card. Barkov probably still feeling pretty good about his pair of tens, though. There is four to a straight on board as well, right? Yeah, I would say checking. Yeah, you got to check the 10 8. It's just the ace is too likely his opponent has. King, queen. Thinking about turning his hand into a bluff now. Actually, he will. I don't know if the 10 8 can call here because, like, what bluffs does he, his opponent have besides. Besides anything, I don't think he does. He, can, he can't find a bluff. I think Queen Jack, King Jack, King Queen, those kinds of hands, they are still likely to see a few more cards. But sometimes Marco they has just been fold. right. Yeah. Oh, he has been right before, but he's not <laughs> right that... this time. It looks like it hurts a little bit. Like, I don't fault him actually for folding there. I, from a hand reading point of view, it's very hard to find any bluffs. Monotone board again, all diamonds. 
Xing Yun makes bottom pair and he still has the four of diamonds too. We know it's good. He probably doesn't think that it's necessarily good. I don't think you call it, right? Bottom pair. He's like, I've seen a five on the river before. Why the hell not again? I think with this many outs, I would call. Uh, without a diamond, definitely mucky. And I think the king 10 can value bet this one. I would expect my opponent, if he had an ace, would have bet the turn instead of checking it. Uh, I like the value bet. I think it's a very clean one. A um, lot, a lot of guys don't do it because they're just a little bit worried about the board texture. But uh, really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I think that separates good from the best players, right? Like being able to make those kinds of bets there. I think a lot of us would just be happy to check it down and see if our ten is good or not. Sevens and aces, both players flop a pair. Five does not improve Barkov. see the question is how much to bet it's an over bet this time this is like as proper of a heads up match as we we get on these super millions you know like uh <laughs> swingy going both ways seven four thinking about looking it up he is going to look it up he just thinks the over bet is a draw it is not that's the thing these guys are balanced they don't just do over bets of only draws they'll do a top pair and barkov does it that way too so you know he understands a6 here. Can he find one more value bet? Uh, it's a little tough. I think of a weak better kicker he would. Uh, A6 mm -hmm. offsuit, probably not. Means that the rich get richer. And Ching Yung is now back to almost 13 million chips. But well, we've been here before. In heads up, it is always far from over. Ace for suited will take this one down. Still plenty of big blinds to play for. But it's got a sting. Like all the momentum we were talking about before. I it's obviously completely gone when a guy, you had him on the ropes, you had him at an all-in, you were two cards away from winning the tournament, and now he's outshipping you two to one. That feels rough. It feels rough, but, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you just got to play your game, but uh, you're not out. It's not like you're down to 10 big lines. Mm -hmm. um, so you just got to keep fighting. Wow. The Russians, in general, they do keep fighting till the bitter end. The nine of clubs doesn't change anything, and it means the ace high of Xing Yun is still good, and he will win another pot of one million chips. That ice cube is not going anywhere, and those flames will stay. This would be a very bad scenario to flop a flush. <laughs> that would be the end of our tournament. Don't mind Barkov letting it go down there. I mean, 7 3. It's going to kind of let it go. And at this point, it feels like we're kind of just waiting for another setup. I don't know if we get a bigger one than Kings versus Aces heads up at a final table. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, pretty much. Um, man, wow. <laughs> Such a sweet thing. Just. I remember not too long ago, Xing Yu was on the ropes. Now he's like the clear chip leader again. Yeah, just show him those two nines. Rub it in. <laughs> the guy's holding a do's off suit, and you're like, I had two nines right away. And he's like, I wish I had two nines. This could be an opportunity for Barkov to win a couple chips, and this is one of the better flops to do so. Both players flop top pair. But obviously, the 10 kicker is way better than the 5 kicker. Yeah, Barkov is back. Um, going to go for a check call. I think he can get three streets of value out of this one, potentially. Um, unless Xing Yun doesn't want to fire a river bet. But, uh, okay. It's a, good, it's a good river card. Two pairs. Feel pretty good. Um, but That's I think Xing Yun will, uh... will pay off any bet size, I think, on a river. This yeah. one, 100%. The 1.4 million will go into Barkov's way. And those with some much needed chips... I don't know if that's enough to get rid of the ice cube, but it is good for him to finally pick up a proper pot again. Maybe feel a little better about his opportunities to still win this heads-up battle. Or are we going to have four chip leaders, <laughs> for, or the chip leader winning the final table four weeks in a row? And once again, guys, in the first 25 editions, we had only the chip leader only winning the final table once. And ever since final table betting got introduced, as the jack makes the straight here, goes check, check immediately on the turn. It's been nothing but chip leaders. 
entering final tables and winning it all. And often it hasn't been easy. It's never been smooth sailing. It's often been a little back and forth, sometimes even getting it in bad, but staying alive and ending out on top. Tonight has been no different. All right, so Xing Yun has been limping a little bit more than his opponent, um, even with uh, you know forty big blinds plus. So you know, he's trying to, he's kind of mixing it up. I don't think these guys sold any action. That's just kind of going over some of the facts that they were uh, were provided. But no, I don't think we had many action sellers at this final table today. Interesting. Uh, Filatov oh. sold some action. Barkov did uh, bluff off a little bit of chips, but uh, just a little bit. Doesn't help with the ice cube, though, Nana Narkal. For Barkov to have a realistic chance at winning this tournament, he needs to get rid of that ice cube next to his time bank. Plenty of time left for both players, as you guys can see. Nine minutes and five minutes. It's totally fine, so I don't think we get in any trouble in that regard. Barkov betting into the guy with top pair. We've already seen that before. Xing Yun will not go anywhere with top pair. Imagine ever since final table got introduced, you just bet on the chip leader every single week. You're like, well, you'd be I'm printing money. This is better to better than playing, right? Yeah. Like, how hard is this really? You just take a look at the guy who has the most amount of chips. You put some money on him, and they keep on winning. I do feel like we, we need a, you know, it's obviously been a somewhat long show already, but we're going to need a big pot. We need something to go Barkov's way. Let's kind of get the energy up over here. Like, oh, trip fives is pretty good, but I don't think King Jack is really going to get too out of line. We do have a backdoor. Backdoor straights, backdoor diamonds. Well, those are all dead. It's going to be hard for Barkov to really get a lot here. He is going to try his best. Uh, King Jack, I think, will should call this one. Um, beats all the straight draws, flush draws. Uh, obviously, that's a bad card for it to call down again because your opponent had a flush draw. He would have gotten there. Oh, he checks. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't know if I like that check from Barkov. I feel like he should just hope his opponent has a hand to pay off and, and still bet. It's a little bit uncharacteristic. Yeah, he was playing, I, I feel, almost flawless in the first two hours. Obviously, in heads up, it's pretty much impossible to always be right and always make every single correct decision. Queen Jack offsuit against Ace Deuce offsuit. Let's see what Barkov decides to do. He probably looks at that Ace and is like, damn, haven't seen one of those in a long time. Like, he's like, I am loving what I see now. And he does flop a pair of Aces, so that is fantastic. But the bad news is that for him, that Xing Yun doesn't really have anything to continue here. Yeah. Uh, Ace rags have been three betting, bluffing, and sometimes your pawns will call, but <laughs> you got to fluff an ace or usually you lose that pot. Ace King suited, obviously a premium. Uh, no action coming, I imagine. Never oh. mind. Never mind. Now Alexei is back in contention. We should be really close in chips after this pot, I imagine. Yep. I mean, this is going to be a fold, of course, for the 9-4 offset. I do like that by Xing Yun, even though this was the wrong moment, right? But imagine he's doing that with a much weaker ace, like an ace-4 offset, that kind of stuff. It's much more likely that you actually take it down pre-flop. We've seen those uh, weak aces being folded quite a few times. So, you know, the timing was off because the guy did have ace-king suited, but I still like the attempt by Xing Yun. Especially in heads up where they're just raising so much garbage. Uh, they're just going to raise king three offsuit, for example, and just have to fold two, two, three bet. Mm -hmm. Don't mind it at all. But the good news for Barkov is that he's now back to 8.4 million. And that indeed just makes it a little more of a match again. That feels a lot more even than the 12 million against the 6 million or 13 million against 5 million. King Deuce decides to bet here. Kind of like it. Oh, but King Tree calls. <laughs> <laughs> now I wonder what happens on this river, Nana. Yeah, you would think they're both trying to check it down, but now it kind of seems like someone's going to want to think they should turn their King High into a bluff. Yeah. Um, potentially a Barkov here. I kind of think he should. Just 
No, you just going to check. So it's pretty funny. They're going to show these yeah. hands down. <laughs> They're like, damn it. Neither of us was up to any good. <laughs> pretty uh, adventurous call there on the turn. Aces are going to raise it up. Barkov is going to let four of the 8-4. Will he show the aces? No, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't want to give that feel good to his opponent. I can understand that one. <laughs> You're a show so, card master, huh? You like you understand the, the perfect time on uh, when to show your hand. There is a meta of when you want to show one, two, or none. And if your opponent just folds free flop to your raise of aces, you don't show. You don't want to give him that satisfaction. I mean, we're playing for eighty thousand dollars over here, right? So. <laughs> master, check, check, king on the turn. That's pretty good news for Xing Yun. I think Barkov might still pay off a bet on the turn. Um, so got the oh. you got the draw to the ace. That's why you call. <laughs> Obviously, you had the wheel draw too, right? So fives were good. Ace is good too. There are three spades on the board. And maybe that's why Xing Yun feels that his king is no good. Obviously, A is not a card you really want to see when you're playing King Queen there. Now, that's a hand that should make Barco feel good, especially because he just lost the Ice Cube, Nananoko. That was the <laughs> hand that tipped it over. He just needed one more little victory, loses the Ice Cube, and Xing Yun loses his flames. Now we've got a dead even match. <laughs> it's not even about chips. Yeah, that's the thing. They got the dead even chips. That's why we had to remove all of the little graphics on, on their fire and ice. King five is gonna just start putting the pressure. He wants the chip lead. He's Here back, baby. You lose the ice cube and you are just back into the zone. This is where we enter the matrix. He's like, I'm three hands away from getting a little flame next to my hand. <laughs> oh, ace do suited flops bottom pair. No clubs. Queen three offsuit flops mid pair. Definitely going to see a come along here with the ace deuce. Um, Barkov of queen three. I think he can go. Usually checks the standard, but he maybe he decides to bet. Um, I think now at this point, both hands seem very checkable. Well, ace deuce makes the check. Barkov could check. Thinking of maybe putting in some chips. Decides to check it down, and he will receive the good news that his queen three also beats ace do suited. And he is back to being a chip leader, Nanonoko. It's been a while, but he managed to do it. He dug himself out <laughs> of the hole. That's right. Um, let's see. Queen seven. Okay. Oh. Top and bottom. Let's see how the opposite play this. Is he going for the small bet on the flop and an over bet the turn? That's kind of what he's been playing, right? I think he might over bet this turn card because he's just thinking he can represent a lot of draws. Yep. Especially if he wants to be consistent with how he's been playing. 1.3. 1.6 even. Okay. <laughs> but Ace 8 will get out of the way real soon. Barkov definitely going on a little bit of a heater. Who won that uh, Queen's Gambit again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who was it? Did he have the same name as Borkov? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. 10-3 <laughs> three suited, doesn't flop anything. Neither does King Jack. Even though King Jack does pick up the gut shot. And obviously you still have an overcard. Do you call here, Nana? Uh, of course. The question is, can you bink a 10? Um, but in general, gut shots, you just don't fold them in heads up. Uh, because obviously if you hit your hand, it's great. But uh, a lot of times your opponent has junk and they just check back the turn. You just fire even if you miss. But look at this. Another bet from 10-3 high. I don't think I call this King Jack. I mean, it's possible, but uh, it just starts to get a little bit pricey. It's a good pot there going over to Xing Yun. He absolutely needed that just to gain a little bit of momentum again. Barkov strikes back. He's going to raise up the 7-6 offsuit. This is a pretty epic heads-up battle. We've been here for a while. In 11 minutes, we will enter another break, and then it would have been a full hour of heads-up poker between these two. We don't get to see that each and every single week at the High Roller Super Millions. Oh, 
Okay, nice check because you just spiked the jack. And I think Barkov, queen seven here, he might feel like he wants to bet. Uh, he knows his hand doesn't have much showdown value. He is going to fire out here. I think he might follow through with a river bet if it uh, kind of blanks out, to be honest. I think this is a card where he might feel enticed to just keep betting. His opponent could easily have a naked spade that will fold to another bet or like a six with a spade. A five, I, yeah, I just don't see him doing anything but betting and losing. <laughs> and that means that Xing Yu will take back the chip lead here. It's a good moment. As Alexei gives us a running cold. Good moment to let all of you guys know that uh, we will have a broadcast on this channel this Saturday. The final table of the mini main will be covered by Jeff and one of his co-commentators. Starts 7.30 Central European time, I believe. So 1.30 on the East Coast. And what is that on the West Coast? 10.30 a.m.? Something like that. Yeah, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. I always enjoy watching those final tables. It's very cool. Are, are we seeing a Negranu match tonight on this, uh, today in this um, channel later today? I think so, right? Really? Back-to-back -back days? I don't know what their schedule is. I mean, they're not very consistent. Obviously, Doug had like a birthday party and Daniel had something. So they weren't playing oh, a lot last week. Oh, birthday party. <laughs> what? I'll look what? it up for you. Let me look it up. No, All let right. me see. I mean, they played yesterday, of course, but I feel like they often they have a one-day break in between so they can both do some studying and go over their hands. As uh, Alexei Barkov wins a proper pot with Jack-9, flopped top two pair. And does not retake the chip lead, but it's awfully close. If he wins this one, nah, he still doesn't retake the chip lead, <laughs> but it's still very close. But now he has pocket fours and he's going to flop a set, so that's pretty good. Boom, no, 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 no. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a scary hand, to be honest, because there is a spade draw on board. Xing Yun has 10 3 of spades. Finally, geez, Louise, how many times did I do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so check Ray is coming and let's see what happens. Imagine if this is the first time ever you're watching the show. You're like, what the hell? How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. I know that's funny. Um, and it's a big, it's a very important pot to, to hit a set. Let's see, another bet's coming. And so, Spade draw might pay off one more. It's a big bet. Hmm. Big river card. If we do get a call here, imagine if it's the king of spades, then it's all over. Oh, there's a lot of cards that could make it all over for, for, for most of these guys, right? But it's, oh, a, it's, wow. too, it's a little bit too big. With the ten naked, the ten spade draw, it's a little. It sucks. Can imagine if your opponent has like a queen high spade draw, and you know that's what you're thinking about. You want a higher spade draw to continue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still a big pot heading his way, so that's pretty good news. Barkov back in the lead, and now flops top pair with his jack eight offset. Nine five did flop bottom pair. King does not change anything, but. Xing Yun does pick up a flush draw with his nine of hearts. Check is still good. I guess we're just checking. And if Xing Yun bets, I think we just check or we call. Do you think Barkov ever bets here? I don't think there's any reason to bet right now. He just checks it down. It makes a lot of sense. He's back over 12 million, Nanonoko. Should we uh, <laughs> yeah, start right. celebrating? So, <laughs> so there is no, no duck poke today, but tomorrow they'll be back at it. Uh, that makes sense. on this channel <clears throat> so they had a day to go over some of the hands that they played and do a little bit of studying do some research they like to do that yeah okay. they, of course they like to study <laughs> um all right on to this hand real quick okay so 75 percent pop bet from xing yun um doesn't have anything i don't think he should be barreling again uh because a lot of hands on that turn card will just keep calling down uh it's a big pot now, though. Yeah. Xing Yun thinking of uh, taking a stab at it. And I can't blame him because 1.5 million, you definitely want to see that going your way. I don't think he ever thinks that King High is good here. The thing is, Barkov checks so quickly that I'd be tempted to bet because uh, mm -hmm. it just looks like he's just trying to get the showdown, but it looks like he does give up. I often have this uh, feeling as well whenever you're playing online poker when they check really quick, like two streets in a row, I was like, 
he just has no interest in this spot, you know. Can I just bet one big blind to take it down? Like, <laughs> does he have the uh, fall to everything button clicked? You know, <laughs> that does still happen very often at the lowest stakes. Oh, that most definitely. Four three offsuit does flop best. Uh, it's continuation bets obviously will happen on his queen paired boards a lot. So check Ooh, raise. Like okay, that. just yeah. I think I like it because almost every card that rolls off is bad, right? Or like could be bad, could be scary. Other than a four or a three, this feels like there's no good card. So you may as well raise and see where you're at. This is something that we were talking about a lot in the first 10 weeks. And I really like that move. It's good um, if your opponent plays straightforward to it. So let's just say they never float you or three bet uh, back that flop. If mm -hmm. you start playing against those players, then check raising does not look as good uh, by far. But then again, I haven't really seen any of these guys really just play back at those. Like, So I can definitely see um, raising being pretty good. Kings, Barkov is like, I swear to God, if you have aces again. <laughs> but, uh, nothing to worry about. This time it was Kings against 3-5 offsuit. Both players having hearts now. Ooh, oh, oh my goodness! My it right, like how can someone not lose all the chips in this spot? Oh, this um, is bad, Niels for Barkov, because obviously a I mean, six not... is no good. Yeah, true, but uh, I mean, is he could potentially win this spot too, right? Obviously, he can hit his hand, but he could maybe bet and just bet again. There's a lot of different things that could happen. You're just feeling bad. You're just shaking your head. Rowdy, what's the, what do you mean? All the, all the hearts are gone, Nanonoko. This is the amount of hearts that a deck of cards has, okay? It's impossible to roll another heart <laughs> on that river. <laughs> like, how can we ever make a flush here if both players chasing the flush? See? <laughs> King of... But maybe he could turn his hand into a bluff. I mean, it's a very scary board, but... Whoever bets is winning this pot, and I think one of these two guys are betting. I don't even think Shin Yun would check this back if it gets checked to him. It just seems like he's got to turn the nine into a bluff. Who's going to... Who wants it more? Well, Alexei Barkov probably wants it more, but he also is like, damn it, finally took the lead again. Do I really want to lose even more chips than I've already lost already? He knows that ace high is no good. Can he represent the backdoor flush? Can he represent the 10? No, he cannot. I think Xing Yu needs to... I know he wins if he just checks it, but I just feel like it's mandatory to just keep betting on this river card. Four mm -hmm. straight. Oh, he is going to check. Wow. Uh -huh. He's going to feel real good about here, about this one. Yeah. But man, that, that was a closing hand. That could happen. Mm -hmm. He's going to feel real good about it. And I think that Barkov is going to feel real bad about it because he's like, damn it, I should have bet because he would have definitely gotten his opponent off the nine. Well, that's a big one that went into Xing Yun's favor. So this heads up battle will continue. Both players flop a pair on this one. This is so swingy. This is a uh, heads up battle for the ages. <laughs> and they play fast, dude. They play really fast. Um, Xing Yun got off. Going to obviously go for a value bet. I guess the question is, will Barkov pay it off? I think he will. Um, yeah. Oh. These guys, they know they, they float out of position with high card type hands that you just kind of have to pay off with these random pairs now. You know, like if they call him Jack-10 on the flop, which they would, uh, they're, they're going to have to fire. We've had so many lead changes between these two in this heads-up battle. You know, it's like Xing Yun has got the lead. Barkov got the lead and just goes back and forth. NBA, I don't know if you follow basketball. They have this really cool little graph of like how many times the lead changes. And uh, it happens I've never seen often. it. Okay. This is kind of funny. Both players flopping the open end here. <laughs> now, I kind of hope that they don't make it because then we'll... Okay. No. They're both so excited right now. They're like, here we go. It's like, no. Literally nothing's going to happen, guys. Yeah. Barkov's like, you know what? I'm not going to overbet this one just because I want to yeah. make sure you call. He's going to feel good when his opponent actually does continue. Uh, yeah. Shin Yun think about actually check raising. This is so Don't funny. Him. This is where the clock wheels are turning in their heads that I got him right where I wanted. Like, this is the spot I've been waiting for. You're getting so excited. You're like, this is it. And don't forget that we started this hand dead even in stacks. All in, snap go, and we chop it up. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> they were both so excited, They're like, oh, yeah, I got them good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny for both of them. This was the highlight of the evening. 
when, when they see that little animation, the chips going in and you see that it's getting cold. And we just knew that it was literally not going to change anything. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen an emoji in a while. Yeah. Do you think either of them is steaming after that hand? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> More disappointed, but we do reach yeah. another, that's over an hour heads up play, Roddy. Yep. I think that's only the second time in 28 weeks, guys, that we have a full hour of heads up play. Well, we started with two and we ended with two entering the next break. That means we're going to take four minutes. Guys, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. To follow all the crazy heads up action of course between danny on the grano and doc polk and then of course on saturday we have coverage of the mini main as well on this channel should be a lot of fun there is final table betting for that one too i believe so take a look over at the gg poker client maybe one of these players catches your fancy buy her a couple bets for now we're going to take a little break and we'll be back in four minutes see you guys real soon hopefully you guys are having fun we've been having a blast you're back
All right, guys, 20 seconds and we will continue this heads up battle between Xing Yun and Alexei Barkov. And I gotta say that now I was giggling a little bit in my break because I know that you saw my tweet. Uh, somebody that I follow that organizes a lot of StarCraft tournaments or just esports tournaments in general sent out a tweet saying like, tell me something good that happened to you in 2020. And I was like, oh, well, I'm commentating this weekly poker show because of Elki. And uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I'm very happy to provide coverage. And then somebody else just replied, Ronnie, I think you make a great poker commentator and you do really well paired up with an absolute crush and basically just bashing you, which is super <laughs> unnecessary and silly because obviously commentating with you is awesome and you are a very accomplished poker player. But he's like, you've been doing great, but you just need somebody next to you who knows even more about the game than you do. There's never no good guy's question. <laughs> I thought it was yeah, so he... funny. Yeah, that, that guy. Well done. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Uh-oh, this could be some trouble for Alexei Barkov as he flops yeah, mid-pair. First... Yeah, this, this is a bet call, I think, with the 10-7, at least on the flop so far. Especially we've seen his opponent check raise bottom pair before. Backdoor spade. Could have the best hand. And I need a lot of help. A 10 would be absolutely disastrous. It would be all over if a 10 rolls up on the river. <laughs> seven, seven is the only thing that could really save him in this one. That's already a 2 million chip pot. There's, I mean, it's a pot size bet. I don't know if the 10 7 will continue again. There's a no. chance, though, because of the draws, but you holding a 10 of spades is so not a good thing yeah. if you're trying to pick off some draws. So, dang, nice fold. I think we gotta let this one go. That could have been a lot worse, but obviously still a pretty big pot heading the way of uh, Xing Yun, who could be in a bit of trouble here as he limps with a6 offsuit. Alexei Barkov picks up aces, will raise it up, and a6 is gonna make the call, but he flops absolutely nothing. If you also notice that every single time someone wins like a pot, and you're like, "Ooh, this could be heading a certain way." The following hand, it just swings back immediately. <laughs> and uh, Barkov tried to get a check in there. Doesn't, his opponent doesn't take the bait. Makes a big bet on the turn. Expecting A6 to just let this one go. And that is exactly what happens. So Barkov is chipping up again to 8.6 million. Wakes up with Ace 10, the following hand. Seven six makes the call, flops a gut shot. A ten flops nothing, but A ten is still pretty good, right? More often than not, you're like A ten, got some good showdown value. I think it's definitely will be calling a bet. Um, you could have the best. Oh, <laughs> it's an over bet. The over bets are the tricky ones, though. He does still beat all the draws, which an over bet kind of says. Your opponent does have a draw a lot, so he might still come along, and he does. But it is the nut straight versus a straight. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> my God. This is bad news for Alexei Barkov. I mean, obviously, he knows that he's losing to all the sixes, but he's not just losing to a six here. He's losing to the nuts. <laughs> Seven, six. Man, that is a horrible river card for Alexei Barkov. Yeah, that was a good call, too, on the turn with just the ace high. Shin Yun should bet what he thinks an ace would pay off in the maxima. And I yeah. think it's a pot size bet. It's an all in. Oh, 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 this could be it, guys. If Alexei Barkov makes the call, this tournament is all over. <sighs> It's a little greedy, I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> you know, you might get your opponent to hero fold an ace this, with this. This is over 2x the pot. I don't know if I could fold this, man. I mean, yeah, sure, every six does have... Maybe... maybe. Oh, he nice does fold. make the fold. What a fold by Alexei Barkov. I mean, sure, every six beats him. It's not just the seven six. It's every six, but... Oh, well done. We still have a battle. Yeah, uh, I think I think Shin Yun got a little too greedy. If he should have just bet like four or five million, which is still mm -hmm. an over bet, and he still would have got uh probably got paid off there. Yeah. Um. Regardless, he's still in it. So Barkov gets another life. So he's got 
He does have a chance to actually win this pot, despite mm -hmm. being super outflopped. Yep. A five would be a terrible card. You definitely don't <laughs> want to see a five. He's going to need an eight or a heart. I do believe he's... Uh, it's tricky, but I do think you make the card. Oh, he, he got it. Spike the heart on the river. Wow, that's a big pull already. I mean, I just can't believe the swings because at one point, at that last hand, Barkov could be down to two million in chips, potentially, or even out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really thought he was going to bet four million. Like, I think it's unnecessary to go for the all in there. Like, yeah, if he gets it done, he gets it done. It's all over. That's awesome. But if you bet four million, you take such a monstrous lead in the heads up battle, too. And I think four million absolutely would have been paid off. And now all of a sudden, we're still pretty close to each other. Queen nine here against seven nine. It's like backdoor hearts are pretty good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Does make the call of the queen high, which is correct. Um, does turn a pair, so I don't really imagine him folding. Mm -hmm. Even to an over bet, I feel like he probably still would call again, especially this bet. Um, you know, and heads up, like, see, in, if it was full ring, you wouldn't be calling with these one pair type hands as much, right? But with, in heads up, you're always calling. It's just they always have these draws. They're always betting with the draws, too. Barkov, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he can bet this one. He is I up against like, the king a lot. Yeah, but he needs to bet if he wants to win this, and he probably needs to bet big. He is thinking yeah. about it. Clock is ticking. Three and a half minutes left in the time back, and he bets three million. I can Queen Nine make the call. I don't know. It oh. does. Wow. Okay. Six, That's, six. That is a monster pot heading in the way of Xing Yun. He's not won it yet, but 15 million to 5 million. That looks a lot better for Xing Yun than it's done in a very long time. Man, that was a great call with Queen Nine there. That was a big That's bet on the river as well. It's an amazing call because, like, um, he could easily have a better hand to call with, like a king, but you know. These guys, they, this is a swinging match, and I cannot believe this, the hands has been going so far and the swings. Xing Yun is actually in commanding lead now, but he actually calls with worse on this flop. Yep, but I do think he's going to call again here with the ace queen. 400k. Potentially, I don't know. It's tricky. He okay, yeah. that's a good spot. For Barkov is back again. This is so <laughs> swinging. That is uh, literally the dream card. A lot of cards would have been very bad Niels. But the trees will give him the full house. That's 1.3 million. I like that sizing a lot. I believe we call this off with an ace. Decent chance. Especially Xing Yun has seen Barkov multi-barrel off against him when he just held the queen eye not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So he knows his opponent's capable. Wow. Nice fold. Okay. But uh, it's, 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 Barkov's going to be back to 10 million real soon. Watch. <laughs> know about that queen five xing yun giving us the not sure if there well done though he's also making a lot of very good plays in this heads of battle obviously you know we've been a little biased for barkov he was my prediction to win it and i keep picking runner-ups and never the winner <laughs> but i gotta say xing yun is playing a, an excellent heads up battle here for sure well, i mean you've been a little bit biased i've been on the sidelines just watching <laughs> you just crumble you know <laughs> like it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not looking too good at that uh, in that regard, but I mean, we've been here before. We were exactly here an hour and 10 minutes ago. 15 million against 5 million, and Barkov uh, at one point almost had it. Had his opponent down to 2 million. We had an all in with pocket fours against ace eight. It could have ended there. That, back then, the pocket fours did not make a set. A little bit <laughs> later, they did, though, guys, to restore the order in the universe. And it almost finished, sealed it and finished it off. Um, but this this has been a long heads up match, potentially our longest um, ever in our Super Billions, and it's yeah, still going. Had, <laughs> yep, we had one or two that went for a long time, but this one is getting there. I think if we'd go for another twenty minutes, it could very well be the longest one we had so far. This spot is brewing quite nicely too. Six five. He's in a bit of trouble against the ten nine. It's a lot of draws out there. I think the 6-5 might still call one off. Um, obviously, not a good card. Not a good card at all for Alexei Barkov. It's going to make Xing Yun feel very good. Too bad. Probably pretty big. Maybe 1-3, one, 1-4. One, 
just trying to get a call. Yeah, I think that's the right play um, because, you know, people getting too greedy with these over bets. You need to tone it down a little bit. Try to get your opponents to side call it off. 6-5. Oh, man. I don't think calling is that great. What's tricking Barkov a little bit is like, did you bet a 9 on the turn? Because only a 9 would be safe to bet this river. Uh, because even a jack would check back a lot on the river card with the top mm -hmm. card, the, the flop top card pairing. So I think Barkov should be able to get away, but he is kind of confused why he's still his opponent's triple barreling off here. I think he's calling. I I think I'd call. I think you just kind of hope that you're good and you hope that he missed. Maybe he missed I mean, hope ball. is not a hope is not a good strategy, Roddy. We got you got he calls. He did this before when he says so sick he calls. See? Yeah. And he does make the call again. I can understand the call. Well, this time he was just wrong. Trip nines is good. And the lead gets bigger and bigger for Xing Yun. Alexei Barkov is starting to enter pretty dangerous territory. Now down to 20 big blinds. Ace Deuce. Is he going to rip it in or is he just going to see a flop here? 20 bigs. He is going to call. Well, uh, if Alexei Barkov still wins this, it would be a pretty epic comeback. Like, not once, but twice. On the other hand, Xing Yun, the man who came in as chip leader. The previous three weeks, we had the chip leader winning the entire tournament. <laughs> now flops, now he turns the ace. So he will take the lead in this one, too. And things are going from bad to worse for Alexei Barkov, who does fire a pretty big bet. Xing Yun not going anywhere with his aces. Yeah, um, Barkov was just, he's down. Okay, think about it this way, though. They both have gone down to 2 million chips in heads up so far. So, it's been a fair fight. Can he also get back up to the 18 million, though? You don't even believe it. You're telling me with a smile <laughs> over your face. Because you, you know that it's ridiculous. You've done it again for the fourth week in a row. And then Anoko congratulated me on the money that I never ended up winning. He's like, well done, Roddy. You've done it. You finally picked the winner. Even put some money on him. You got to feel great. It's like, I'm feeling fantastic right now, Nenonoko. Again, my guy couldn't close out an 8 to 1 chip lead. <laughs> I mean, it's not over yet, but it's looking real grim. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's got eight big blinds now, Nenonoko. The other guy's got 80. He's like, well. <laughs> uh oh. Well, well maybe we should just figure out what hand should we win the tournament with for the for the giveaway, you know, yeah. at this point. I mean, Xing Yun, if you got to win it, then win it with King Jack Offsuit. King of Clubs, Jack of Hearts. Okay, so I, I do finally win something in my life. <laughs> Queen 6 with the all in here. We have entered the stage where the chip leader can just kind of start shoving random hands to pick up these super important big blinds. And yeah, Alexei needs to get it in now with basically any two. He's down to five big blinds. This is it, Nanonoko. We are, yeah, I think King Seven. You just go for it, right? There you go. Yep. Man, it's been an epic <laughs> battle, but I can't believe that it. Where did it even spiral out of control so bad? Like, what was it? What were the hands? The trip nines obviously hurt, and then the, the queen nine call it was, was just, a big one. It was just some. Oh, let's see this one. A six is obviously going to call here. Yep. This is it, guys. If you guessed a6 for the winning hand, you are hoping now that this no one picked up. a6. Come on, uh -huh. but the club five club king five club is what we need. If it's nope, that's not a club and it's not a five either. No, it's not. That is it. We have a Neil champion, and for the fourth week in a row, the man who entered the final table of the high roller super millions as chip leader. Ends up winning it all. Congratulations to Xing Yun for winning $381,000. Before we started this final table, that man had won $133,000 on GG Poker throughout his entire GG Poker career. Today, well, he adds a very nice little price to it. Nanonoko, it was a pretty epic table. It started off explosive when we still had all nine. We had just big hand after big hand. Now we've been here for almost four hours. Where do we even start? 
I mean, it was a very fun final table, especially in the beginning full ring. There was a lot of double ups, a lot of big hands. Um, you know, eventually we did dwindle down, bust out some people. Petrangelo was the guy with the most money on him. Did not get it done when he made that queen 10 suited shove into uh, Shin Yun's uh, pocket, uh, queens or kings, I can't remember, or aces. One of the big hands. And that's how we got to heads up. And the heads up match was the highlight, I think, of this uh, match today. They both played really good. Yeah. They both used a lot of over bets. They both played, made a lot of good hero calls. Um, you asked me, when was the part when, um, well, what changed it for Shin Yun to come back from the 2 million to 18 million chip stack? And honestly, there really wasn't any crazy mistake, I think, uh, that uh, Barkov made. Um, I feel like he played good. His opponent obviously made that really good call of the Queen-9, but if your opponent has Queen-9 there, I would be bluffing too with the 9 high flush draw that missed. And, you know, like, they both played phenomenal. It was just a very swingy match. They both got big stacks, small stacks. Um, I guess the really thing, the defining moment was when I said, what about the Queen's... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, do you remember what I asked? I said about the Queen's Gambit. <laughs> oh yeah, we had Kings against Aces. That was a big one, oh, yeah, of the, course. The Kings versus yeah. Aces. But I asked about the Queen's Gambit. I was like, isn't Barkov's name very similar to the person in Queen's Gambit? And it's Borgov. And what happens at the end? And after that, something happened and all the yeah. chips gone. I mean, Kings against Aces was obviously a big one, but we had a lot of poker afterwards. I do feel one of the defining hands towards the tail end of our broadcast was the A6 of hearts against the 9-7 of hearts, where they both had the flush drop, but 9-7 made a pair and the board ran out pretty scary, 4-2 straight, 3 spades on there. And I think that if Barkov would have bet that river, he would have taken that pot down. And that was a big pot, right? That was over 4 million chips that would have had its way. It could have been maybe the little thing that he needed. Do got to mention that we had 34 people, only 34 people, because a lot of bets actually went on the second, third, fourth, fifth guys. Obviously, a lot of you guys out there bet on Daniel DeForest, and a lot of bets were made on Nick Petrangelo as well. But 34 bettors in total bet $41,000 on the man who came in as ship leader. The odds were 3.8. And well, congratulations to you guys out there. And if anybody predicted A6 offsuit, what was it? Ace of diamonds, six of hearts to be the winning hand. Congratulations, you won a thousand dollars. If nobody bet it, that means that the jackpot will remain and you guys can fight over the jackpot again next week. Make sure to follow GG Poker on Twitter. No longer GG Poker official, it is just GG Poker. Even our production crew just wrote, rather than you are cursed. And I'm like, I know. Like I I am the, the modern equivalent of the Bad Luck Brian meme that was going around in the early 2000s, you know. Just put me in here with a GG Poker casting uh, overlay around me. Because this, this is actually getting a little ridiculous. I have been like nine rivers away from winning at least a bet or picking a winner. And I just cannot get it done. I am the worst closer in the universe, Nano. Yeah, um, I was going to remind you. Yeah, you did have money on the line from the final table betting, which is a cool feature. But you're also so close to picking the winner again with a Russian player, you know, that he was Archer was the one guy you got right. And I thought maybe yeah. you will get it right this time, but uh, yeah. you did not. Um, it's been fun needling you, Roddy. But, yeah. uh, you'll, you'll get it eventually. I, I never thought in a million years that I could be ever tilted while just commentating poker or, you know, commentating anything for that regard, because I always have a good time commentating. But we are really starting to reach the boiling point. Like if next week <laughs> I, I put down another few bets and I predict the guy to win it and he's down heads up and you tell me, well done, Ruddy, you've done it again. <laughs> Congratulations. I think I might snap on you, mate. Like I, until I see all chips heading towards my guy. And I see the pop up of how much money they've won. I will uh, not. I will no longer tolerate any of those comments. Just say so you know. Well, no, Roddy, I, was... I want to tell you. There's one more thing. I don't know if you remembered. You made a mistake actually in this heads up match. I, you actually got excited when it was 18 million to two million for Borkov. I don't know if you remember. You actually yeah. said it. Yep. Thanks. You can congratulate me. It's fine. <laughs> and that's what happened. Yeah, and it's pocket fours as well that let me down. You know, the, the flop was safe, just that ace on the turn. 
kept Xing Yong alive, but obviously well done by Xing Yong. I do believe that he played very well towards the later stages of the heads up early on. It felt like he was getting outplayed in a couple of spots, but he definitely kept his composure and he did an amazing job in bringing it back. Of course, you always need a little bit of lady luck on your side, but he played an excellent final table. Uh, it wasn't always easy for him, but he never got too out of line. He never tilted, never made silly plays. Just well done. Another great champion to add to the list of already great champions of the High Roller Super Millions. And that is going to do it for us today. We had a pretty damn long broadcast, Nananoko. We've been live for almost four hours. Do you have any final words, anything you want to say to all the poker fans out there? Um, I'm excited to see you lose again next week. <laughs> I'm excited for a lot of things, but I don't know if I can emotionally take that. Uh, it's been fun. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Of course, this tournament always gets played on Sunday. We do have qualifiers, uh, satellites actually, as you call them. I've been casting too much StarCraft, guys. Everything is a qualifier there. But we do have satellites run, so if you want to try your luck, you can always try uh, you know, to get lucky in one of these satellites, make your way into the main event, and then maybe you have a fantastic Sunday. And then on the Tuesday uh, night for me, Wednesday morning for Nano, you'll be commentated by us. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching the show and hopefully see all of you guys next week.